Welcome to a brand new Spud Venture that I'm fairly excited about. Uh, we're going to be playing with the Root Tabletop RPG Quick Start Rules uh, for a three-session mini-campaign uh, run by our good friends Winged Cat and Great Din as code GMs uh, for something we're calling the Renegades of Riverhop. So take it away. Whenever you're ready. Cat, you're muted. Yeah, no, 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 yeah, no. I was just getting my materials. Okay, welcome again to our exploration of Spud Studios' assorted works. This time, we take a look at one of their more recent animated series, Root, a tale of animal people in a late medieval era, in particular at an excerpt from the second season. While the series creators admit that it is, as they put it, partially merchandise funded with all CGI animation enabling 3D print-on-demand action figures. It's shaded to look like simpler drawings, but the lightning in the opening where they set a car on fire gives it away. It has also won, won critical acclaim for its intricate plot and parables about modern social issues. On its face, it is a society in the midst of, of a multi-state war. The denizens of the woodland used to be ruled by the Erie dynasties who provide time-tested tradition and comfort, but are very much the elite of society, in turmoil time and again as they fall on each other with seemingly little regard for those they rule over. Into this gap steps the Marquis de Cap, who represents so much of the new ways. Technological improvements to daily life, but also foreign culture imposing itself, sometimes clashing with what the denizens refer, not to mention the beginnings of environmental damage showing up anywhere they are long established. Silently, in the background, just enough to make you wonder what their home is like. And then there are the other factions, which seem at first to be dismissible like American third parties, until you look closer. Foremost among the others is the Woodland Alliance. Rebels, ostensibly working for the denizens to rule themselves, but with more than flashes of mustache twirling villainy, ruthlessly sacrificing their people for the greater good. Then you have the Riverhook Company. Capitalism, in a word, was everything good and bad about it. The lizard folk cult represent religion. Even the adventurer protagonists of this story are called vagabonds, with all the baggage that comes with that term, though they are mostly heroic. Mostly. I'm okay. fascinated by how you try to keep tying everything to the Spud Cinematic Universe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. this, this one just felt natural. I mean... If, if the, in the animation style, you could almost see it as Ruby-like. Kinda, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, we should probably explain for the audience real fast what the Root Tabletop role-playing game is. Yes. Uh, it is currently a Kickstarter for a uh, Powered by the Apocalypse system based on the tabletop role-playing, or not the tabletop role-playing game, but the tabletop board game, Root which does in fact have the aforementioned alliances, the, uh, the Beery dynasties, the uh, Marquis de Cotte, uh, the uh, uh, Woodland Alliance, the River Folk Company. Uh, there's also the Corvid Conspiracy and the, uh, the Grand Duchy coming out soon. Um, it's a very fascinating uh, tabletop board game where nobody plays by the exact same rules. And... Uh, the company uh, Magpie Games, who has done stuff like masks and other uh, wonderful, wonderful products, um, decided, hey, this would be a really cool system, like really cool sort of setting to work around in. And uh, having played some games myself, I agree completely. It sounds a lot like Redwall meets Game of Thrones. It really is. <laughs> Um, so for, uh, for those of you at home, Powered by the Apocalypse means that, uh, us co-GMs, uh, do not roll anything. We just, uh, make moves as players make their own rolls. And, uh, it's a simple system, 2d6, uh, roughly speaking, uh, 1 to 6 is a failure, 7 to 10 is a, uh, 7 to 9 is a mixed success, 10 and above is a complete success. Sort of, kind of. Um... It's a very sort of loose system, lots of uh, role-playing specialties, or role-playing possibilities, and uh, just oodles of things you can do. Um, it's, it's, it's honestly one of my favorite kind of role-playing systems uh, to mess around in. Um, but uh, characters do not pick classes, or players do not pick classes, races, etc. What they pick instead are 
playbooks. And for the root quick start guide, there are six playbooks to choose from, which our players will pick from. So I guess we'll get started then. I think so. Okay. So the six we have to pick from are, there are four of us, four of us players. We got the Arbiter, the Ranger, do do the scoundrel, scoundrel, the thief, the tinker, and the vagrant, which are pretty much what their names suggest. Mm-hmm. Uh, I guess we should ask if there's any that are that anyone is like really set on. I would be very interested in the arbiter, please. So that I would be... like to do the scoundrel. Note that there's no lockout like there is in others. You can totally have a party that is just one uh, playbook, but everyone yeah. pick what they want to play. Ah, uh, and and we should probably, for the sake of like showing it off, like yeah. see everything. Um, so we got... also for no for note, the second season in the intro was meant to imply that yes, you all know each other. You've had a few adventures together. Okay, good to know. Okay. That help. As if you were the protagonist of the second series of a uh, second season of a series, or at the very least, part of the like overall sort of crew. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Well, uh, I think I'm gonna be the vagrant because that's sort of the face class. All righty. So At least have... from the look of it, there's like, you know, using words to get out of dangerous situations. Oh, hello. Yes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I will say our our vagrant had a few problems with that, but that was uh, roles and character choices mostly. Honestly, part of the reason why I like the scoundrel is because I just like luck based characters. Mm -hmm. And a scoundrel gets the plus two to look right off the bat. I can understand yeah. that. You definitely, you definitely do have a preference for that sort of thing, I, re I recall from uh, Dusk City Outlaws. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And hey, there's I... a whole, there is a whole role that you can do if you just want to go with luck. Yep. yep. Yeah. yeah and you can also choose the arsonist. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, so... All right, so is that all four of us, or is there still someone deciding? I'm still semi-debating between a few of them, because it's one of those... There's three possibilities left, and it's... Huh, which do I think I would do the best at? Technically, there's six possibilities left, but... We can double up, but... Yeah, it's just this way we can show off four of the six. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to start. Are there any archetype ideas that sort of inspire you that might work? Yeah, sort of leaning towards the tinker because, you know, the crazy mad scientist character that I tend to end up playing. A lot. Yep. You do, you do tend to be suited towards that archetype. That's also seen in Dusk City Outlaws. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. There's going to be a bit of a crossover there. Yeah, I'll go Tinker. All right. So we have a, yes, yeah, so Arbiter, Vagrant, Scoundrel, and Tinker. Sounds like a motley crew right there. Mm-hmm. Also, if we arrange those differently, it spells vats. <laughs> <laughs> sure does. The, oh, I, just, I did not notice that one. <laughs> the the Vol yeah. auto-targeting system. <laughs> oh, boy, like... I think we might want to save that one for uh, the war arc. Yes, <laughs> that is that is clearly the end. One of the end goals of a of a tinker. Maybe this one. May, maybe dreads tinker. Maybe a different tinker. <laughs> All right. Well, if nothing uh, else, you can use flying squirrels for it. All right. So. Uh... As can be seen from the character sheets, uh, once you've sort of picked which playbook you want to go by, um, you can pick your, it gives you some options for species, uh, for a look, for a demeanor, a lot of sort of, uh, just sort of general appearance stuff, um, which uh, uh, 
you can go with as much or as little of that as you want. It's just sort of a helpful start for people. Yeah. All so right. there, there is no mechanical difference between the races. Um, the one difference there really is is in birds can fly, but between the forest, I mean, you're in a woodland, and the urban area in the clearings, um, any agile, sufficiently agile person, which includes everybody who calls himself a vagabond or vagrant, um, is entirely capable of 3D movement. So the fact that birds can fly doesn't really distinguish anything. Because everyone else can climb. Yeah. Can climb, can, can jump, jump, can parkour, can whatever. Yeah. And and the other thing of note, it's not a mecha mechanical difference, it's something flavor-wise, is that uh, the uh, fox, mouse, rabbit, bird, cat, those are the more commonly seen sort of uh, species. So if you are something else, you might get a few looks of like, oh, I, oh, it's been a while since I've seen a wolf kind of thing. Hmm. I hear dog. Sorry about the dog there. <laughs> Species domesticated dog. What? <laughs> yeah. So the clearings are dominated by fox, mice, and rabbits. So those are the three majority races, if that matters. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Kind of deciding between like mouse or opossum. Right. And then the Erie dynasties are, of course, birds of every stripe, and the Murky de Cat is cats. Mm -hmm. That's okay. it. I I've... don't think we'll run into any penguins. So <laughs> I'm hmm. interested in, for the species, I'm in playing a peacock. Ooh, fancy. Yes. I have a reason for this. I, dang, I just, hmm. I, I immediately love the idea of Arbiter Peacock. <laughs> Dang. See, I don't really like know a lot of animals. So I'm just gonna go with the black cat. Eh, seems reasonable. Yep. I did a lot of stuff with the Audubon in my youth, so birds are one of those things that just sort of click. Mm. I get you. That ended up some time at the nature center as a volunteer, so I got to see a lot of that those a lot of the peacocks, and they are Sometimes smart birds, sometimes dumb birds. <laughs> like Altogether, most, something you notice. Like most birds, they are occasionally smart, but majority dumb. Yes. All right. Um, we can uh, sort of come back to like species and stuff later if you guys want to sort of proceed ahead. Um, That's fine. I don't know, it is, it feels like kind of a fundamental flavor, though. Kind of informs yeah. a lot of the rest of the, the flavor choices. Okay, I just throwing that out there. All right. How did you um, do the backstory, though, for, like, to help people sort of... Yeah, um, would it help if we went over the uh, local geography? Because you don't know what the local clearings are. And sure. what the who's dominating are. Okay, so there are several areas of wood har of uh, woodland each about 12 clearings. So this is a different route map. They're just different areas of woodland. Uh, most of them border on a coast of some kind. Some don't. This one does. It's typical in that way. Um, this one's unusual because it's dominated by a central clearing named Riverhop. Uh, Riverhop is a bunny-dominated clearing, and there is a river going north or south. There are five clearings bordering Riverhop, and each of them breaks off into their own little section of this woodland. So there's a three section to the north, a three section to the west, a three section to the south, and then two off to the right. Um, with a very crude map uh, over in the uh, other chat. Um, so the three sections to the west are dominated by the Erie. The three sections to the south are dominated by the Marquis. The three sections to the north, there's rumors that the Woodland Alliance is up there somewhere, and it, you're pretty sure the river folk trading uh, traders come from up there, because they come along the river down to the south, um, or from the north to, to the south. Uh, to the south is the coast, and well, that's where the Marquis uh, is set ashore here. Uh, to the west is the deep forest and into 
thoroughly eerie dominated lands. And then there's just a couple minor ones off to the east. Uh, one of them, there's rumors of a lizard folk cult or some, some sort of religious spiritual movement that set up a garden in one of them. And the other one appears to be plain, normal, and boring to a suspiciously high degree. So there's a bunch of vagabonds investigating the ruins there, uh, which actually are a substantial complex, but the only wandering encounters they find are other vagabonds. Okay. That sure is a lot of info. Yep. Uh, the Better Bureau Bank, or Better Bureau Bank, has a uh, large uh, branch in Riverhop, um, and other facilities up to the north. Riverhop also has a large meeting house that uh, is built across the river to symbolize two sides meeting, and various other larger than most clearings of buildings. If any of that inspires uh, background ideas for Vagabonds from this area. So a lot of goods probably both change hands here. Also, there's probably a lot of tariffs going on, as well as the coinage is very much... Uh, the bank makes a very, very tidy profit by the sound of it, probably changing from the Marquis to the Erie to the Riverlands or whatever the local coin and or bartering uh, matter is. Plus with the river there, you get trade that you probably have to control. From people, oh, is it yeah. the river going north to south or south to north? Uh, so the river comes from the north to the south. There's mountains off to the north and to the south is the ocean. Okay. Uh, also, the Marquis and the Erie do have presences in River Hop. At the very western edge of town, there's a roost that's been burnt down and rebuilt five times. And at the south, there is a sawmill. Sawmills are automatically Marquis stuff, but this sawmill's been trying to ingratiate itself by selling a lot of lumber to the neutral parties. Not so much to the Erie, but it's not exclusively Marquis. Okay. And it too has been uh, demolished and rebuilt a few times. Uh, the question is, how many times was my tinker involved? <laughs> <laughs> I would think probably a l with this and all, it's a matter of when they needed to uh, either upscale or to actually probably for either fortify or to probably, in, in another sense, keep from both sides are sort of playing against each other to keep things from getting either side too entrenched and employing third parties to do it by the sounds of it. If it, it keeps uh, burning down. Mm -hmm. Point of order. Could I be a squirrel? You absolutely can. Yes. My vagrant is going to be a squirrel. Woo, nice. You're the squirrely type, eh? Yep. Yeah. Gonna call uh, it Rocky? No. <laughs> Look is... Good, because there's already a character named Rocky. <laughs> <laughs> Look is man, uh, cobbled together, stolen military rank insignia, and makeshift luck charm. Okay. All right, all right. Uh, I'm, I'm curious. This might tie into some of the later stuff. Who's military? Uh, remind me of the factions again, just like very briefly. The ones that would have a military are like an official military would be the Marquis de Cot or the um, uh, Erie dynasties. So, birds or cats. Um, or you could have one of each. You could. <laughs> sure, I've got one of each. Okay, then. Lots I've... of enemies, I see. <laughs> I would say that probably, like, the for matters and all, he would probably, for the character I'm playing, I do have a name and all, if you want me to go ahead and share or wait till later. Sure. Okay, the character I am playing is Stralden Yanor. Could you type that, please? Yes, you want me to type it in the... Which one would you like me to type it in? Uh, Discord. Yep, sure thing. I'll... There we go. I put it in, I think, stream adverts. Is that okay? All right. Yep. Yeah, you might want to 
start shifting it back to the tabletop role. Oh, play. sorry. Yep. I apologize. For wrong thing. But yeah. Strolled in here is a bit of a, I would say, probably at the moment, landless noble scion. That from his history probably had heavy ties with the Erie and all. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately, due to some uh, matter of his parents, uh, unfortunately, sleeping around, ended up with a more disenfranchising with what happened. Due to the, unfortunately, sleeping with someone that probably could be considered a uh, spy, more or less. And mm -hmm. it's made mention at the equivalent of a local courts and their lands were unfortunately stripped. So the the uh, scion abandoned by his own country. Interesting. He still has ties within it, but the ruling dynasties of the particular spot of where he was under took a bit of a facefall with that and well, his parents were, well, unfortunately executed, but for their uh, transgressions at the time, due to the importance of uh, some of the local matters. And, well, without lands or home, because they were uh, taken, he was uh, forced to apply more of his uh, trade in other fashion. All right. I like it. <laughs> hmm. So I'm guessing the why did you become a vagabond is the I was exiled from home? I didn't have a home anymore. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And what have you left behind? Your family. Yep, he still has a, a sister or two to... Uh... Let me... Well, I'm... who is graciously basically uh, held, not quite at ransom, but enough so that he doesn't try to make that much of a waves with regards to what happened. Okay. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to go fill out some of these, uh, uh, fill out some of the PDFs so that I, we will have our character sheets long term. Okay, thank you. All right. So, I actually stepped away during some of the backstory to grab mine off the printer, so oh. wow. that my comment of how many times was my character involved was me stepping back and hearing a place had burned down several times. So. Ah, <laughs> right. So the roost, the roost has burned down five times and been rebuilt five times, and the sawmill has been demolished, not specifically burned down, but they got more creative and reassembled multiple times. And there may, other, there may well have been other destructions um, as the fighting got to other clearings. Um, just, uh, I guess as, as, uh, you all make your choices in regards to the character sheet, just send it to me and I will edit, uh, my personal sheets and then I will be able to send them back to you guys so that we will have them all nice and neat. Mm-hmm. All right. Okay. Do you want to select please, idea? And please do talk out your uh, yeah. choices and your thinking during the, on the chat, because that's the whole point. Okay. Yep. Like, I'm looking into, like, some of the matters and all with the some of the character sheet and all, since I can continue to go with. Like, one of the first option is choose your nature of defender or punisher. As much as he's been one to try to, I'd say, a want to protect, he's been the victim of injustice more often than not, that he chooses a more uh, immediate means of matters with that, and would I would be going with the punisher option with Arbiter. I see. Very mm -hmm. good. Yes, and on that note, Azura, I wanted to in particular get, are you going for the arsonist or combative nature? Where's Um. I like the combative nature, but I'm probably going to go with arsonist. Because <laughs> I'm okay, not sure yeah. how often we'll be fighting in this campaign. And you know there's going to be gunpowder. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yeah, so so 
specifically, gunpowder is brought to this area by the Marquis. The secret for how to make gunpowder has started to get out, so it's not just Marquis who've been manufacturing it, but it's, there's still a bit of a market in it. And, of course, the Erie sniff and disdain at the primitive muskets and prefer bows goes, well, an expert bowman can do more, or can kill more soldiers than an early untrained um, musketman. The akin to the old British uh, longbowmen versus the early aqu aquabus and... Very much akin to that, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, the Gatling gun is well in the future of the setting. It is not a present thing. Yeah. Let alone the revolver. Right now, at any rate. Right, right, yeah. The, the present of the setting. I'm debating on the species for mine, because, you know, the uh, beaver's the one shown in the image, and, you know, that's the whole nature's engineer's joke. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, the name is probably going to be the hardest part for me here. <laughs> I'm, I'm sort of debating between like raccoon and otter, just because it's one of those slightly crazy. I can see otters characters. being one of those kind of, especially when you're working around like machines and all, like being the flexibility. Yeah, or something that, like that. If you're, that was, that was part of it. So, yeah, otters use tools. They also like to break stuff, which feels very appropriate. Yeah, yeah. Name wise, I'm going to go with Johann Lockler, although everyone just calls him Nail for some reason. He's never been able to figure it out. Give me, this, give me the spelling on that first name uh, J O H A N N. Okay. I'm putting it on the uh, stream overlay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I just took three names from the name species and look section of the. Quick start. Okay. Which so, that'll happen to be I, right I might, above each other. I might actually just take a look at that list, honestly. Yeah, I Damn. I saw one, and it's like, okay, we're doing references. It's got to be Gustav. <laughs> Gustav? Yeah. All right. Marking down Dread as Gustav again. Yeah. Uh, so we've done playbook, uh, name species, look, we're kind of almost at. Uh, Mint, sure. <laughs> Mint the squirrel. All right. I like it. I do, I do too, actually. That's pretty great. <laughs> Is his fur light green? No, it's just still regular brown. Mm. I gotta say... That combo of names is really funny to me. <laughs> One of these things is very much not like the other. Johann Stroud and Gustav and Mint. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, I'm, so I'm just looking at the uh, moves section as I'm just flipping back and forth, debating about things. Need to figure out where the workshop's going to fit. Do not worry, my friend. We will be able to get that in there. For the looks, I'm going to go with man, suspicious, impoverished, mass steel spark lighter, overly large coat, sulfurous pouches. All right. You said man, impoverished, uh, mass steel spark lighter, and sulfurous pouches? And suspicious and overly large coat. Uh, suspicious and overly large coat. Okay. Yep. I have gone with brute, carry a big stick, and guardian. Oh, probably no. go with the shifty demeanor for my moves. Like I've, I've, but no, I'm just like, they, they weren't, I weren't, not he wasn't talking yet, moves. <laughs> yeah, I was just because I, I saw that it choose its location on the map, so it's one of those got to figure that out in a. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, let there's a we can. Ugh, I feel like we're kind of jumping around all over the Sorry. place. I'll be no worries. Uh, no worries. Uh, I just want to try and make sure that we're you know, getting through things and nobody's like accidentally leaving stuff behind. So uh, everyone's chosen a playbook. Everybody's got names. Everyone's uh, roughly picked out a species. Everyone feel comfortable with the 
their choices there. I'm a, I'm a squirrel. Mm-hmm. Who who's everyone else? I'm a, I'm a peacock black cat. Peacock, black cat, and otter. Otter. Okay, that's a pretty interesting spread. Yeah, I like it. Uh, and everyone's got kind of a look down. Yep. Okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah, do you want to just go from the top so you can record them? Or... Yeah, sure. Let's let's go with that. Uh, so, uh, Stradivarian, uh, what are you going with on your look, real fast? Stradivarian, you are muted. Uh, I think the strat may be AFK for a moment, so let's go with someone else and strat okay. can uh, yeah. move us back out. All right. Uh, so we got uh, uh, Johan's look. Uh, wait. Uh, yes, Johan. <laughs> Sorry, brain had yeah, a just call him Nail. Nail. Okay. Um, so Nail is what? What's Nail's look? He said, "Man, impoverished." Oh, did you, s- Sorry, did you change your name? No, it's Johan. Uh, Johan Walker, but Nail. everyone Nail, calls him Nail. If, he calls himself Nail. No one knows why. If everyone calls him Nail, let's have Nail on the card. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's just Nail as in just N A I L. All right, just Nail. Right like below the, Walker. Like the tool. <laughs> yep. Um, no one knows so, why he's called that though, because it has nothing to do with his name. Nope. <laughs> so look, you said man impoverished with the the lighter, the coat, and the pouches. Also suspicious. Oh yes, and suspicious. Uh okay. Alright, that's your look. Um what is uh what's what's Gustav look like? I'm going with man singed. Eccentric tool belt and inquisitive. Okay. Works for me. Got that down. And oops, one of these. Okay, no, it's all it all got highlighted. All right. Um what was uh and, and what is Mint's demeanor? Uh my demeanor? Mm-hmm. Uh thoughtful. Thoughtful. All right. Uh and give me a moment to... I can put in the, the species stuff later. All right, so we got through that. Where's the next thing on the list? All right. Now we go through the stats. Uh, everyone has... By choosing a playbook, you get your, uh, your stats are effectively laid out. However, at character creation, you can pick one stat to add plus one to. And the stats are charm, cunning, finesse, luck, and might. Adding one to finesse. One to finesse. All right. Hmm. What's cunning generally used for? Uh, cunning is generally used for. Let me pull up the basic moves. Um, generally speaking, cunning is used to do things like trick an NPC or read a tense situation. Um, that it's 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 things that are sort of like identifying problems and making use of them in maybe not so uh, 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 societally positive ways. Gotcha. I'm taking charm. Okay. Arbiter gets a little bit of that, and I'm going to expand upon that. Okay. Uh, Let me... I'll just do that to signify things getting bonuses. And uh, what do you feel, uh, Dread? what do you feel Gustav is getting as a bonus? I'm debating looking at the stuff because, like, finesse would bump me to two and two for cunning and finesse, mm-hmm. which would fit with sort of the uh, mechanic setup. Yeah, I think I'll do that. So, okay. point in. Finesse, finesse. And Spud? Um, I'll put my extra point into cunning, so I'm at 2, 2, minus 1, 0, 0. All right. Sounds good. 
I'm glad that uh, I my forgetting to say that no stat can be above a, a two didn't come into play. <laughs> no. Well, that had been said earlier, so I remembered it. Yeah. All right. So now that stats are done, now might be a good time to go over Stradivarian's look since they're back now. Yes, Stradivarian. Uh, real fast, what is the look of your Arbiter? Ambiguous, well-groomed, tarnished, locket, intimidating. All right. Uh, <laughs> I figured with the peacock, like, the, it couldn't be anything else. Fair enough. Perfectly <laughs> fair. All right. So now we are on to background. Uh, what? Who who would like to sort of, uh, I mean, we I guess we have discussed uh, 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 Stralden's background. So yep. it's, uh, aside from where do you call home? Yep. Uh, where, what, what? Um, what clearing would you like to call home? Would you like to be from this area? In which case, I can give you the we can give you the name of the clearings that the birds used to. I would say he's from the Erie itself, to the west. Okay, so so he is from this uh, this section of the forest. Yeah, he's from um, one of the the leftwards okay. places of the, over there. Um, so the three uh, the names of those zones are uh, Tree Tower, uh, which is the rabbit zone closest to River Hop. Uh, Sunstoke is the name of the fox clearing, and Post Hole is the name of the mouse clearing. So let's go with the fox. Fox, all right. You are from Sunstoke Clearing. I will. Oops, that is the wrong button to press. Please let me edit text. <laughs> Sunstoke Clearing. All right. It kind of messed up, but I'll fix it later. And it's not exile. sunstroke. <laughs> yes, it is not sunstroke. Common joke. <laughs> Common joke. It depends if you're working at the forge or not. Mm -hmm. uh, so, would you say faction you have served the most would be the Irie Dynasty? Yes, he has served with them, despite his uh, issues with them. Mm -hmm. And. Uh, what what faction do you think you've earned the most enmity from? Would it Probably also be the, the Marquis itself, due the to as well? the, what his parents were involved with? Okay. Uh, worth worth noting, you can have special enmity with the same one that you have served the most, because the um one one of the things we have not discussed yet is your reputation. Uh, and the way reputation works in the game is that uh, at the bottom of your sort of move sheet, um, you can see it's got the Denizens, the Marquisat, the uh, the Airy, uh, and there's a bunch of little check boxes. You can add to the plus or minus side of those check boxes at the same time. Okay, but then so, yeah, they would fit with to stay within the Eri itself. Then okay. he's both no notorious for being the son of these people mm -hmm. and yet still has favors within them just the same for his service. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That would work out perfectly then. Thank you. Cool, cool. No worries. I, I just realized I hadn't, we hadn't really talked about it. Also, Winged Cat, if I'm like rambling too much as Codium, feel free to just step in, bud. <laughs> I don't want to steal your thunder. That's all right. Um, you're doing a good job. I'm contributing as needed. Um, since we brought up the faction reputation, Part of the point of doing this as three sessions is so that you can get faction infamy or fame between each session in case anyone gets enough to uh, level up or level down. Mm -hmm. So we are actually going to be doing that at the end of the first and second session. Not maybe the end of the third, although it won't matter at that point, but... To keep the magic alive, because this is probably not the fin season finale, but like a mid-season thing. <laughs> oh, probably early season, actually. Early season? Oh, I, I seemed very mid-season to me from what we had discussed, but I suppose they don't know that yet. Um, <laughs> anywho, uh, Scoundrel. Yes. Nail, where do you call home? A place far from here. A place far from here. Oh, I see. So you you are not from this area. No, and I'm thinking I'm why? from the Marquisette. From the from the Marquisette homelands. Yeah. Ooh, fancy. Um, why did you become a vagabond? Mm. Uh, 
I'm between having destroyed something valuable, being exiled for causing too much havoc, and wanting to be free. Probably one of those three. Okay. Or more of, or like multiple of those three. You're playing or a, all three the of Vagabond? Them. Or the thief. I'm sorry, I wanted to make sure. The no, the vag scoundrel. Vagab scoundrel is the the playbook. Um, okay, that Asher is going with the vagabonds are everybody, even okay. the Arvid okay. is a vagabond. Okay, and vagrant so is new. Yes. Um, how invested in gunpowder are you? In curiosity. Eh. Not really the one way or the other. Yeah. As I said, like you could have tried to see that you could have tried to basically sort of barter off some excess or whatever and been caught with it. Or smuggle it. There we go. And mm. for a little bit of extra coin or a favor down the road. Or any of a number attack. Uh, the Marquisite is importing technology to the area. Uh, gunpowder is by no means the only one type. Mm -hmm. Um... So, uh, some backstory that we may get into a little bit. If you are, especially if you are from the Marquisat, um, the Marquisat's uh, sort of uh, intrusion into the woodland is just following another war outside where uh, the, the kingdoms of Dalmatia were conquered. Um, so, it... it it could be that your character uh, had something to, to either uh, do with that war or thoughts about how the Marquisat was uh, utilizing that. Um, that just, just that's some more backstory that could uh, more world building backstory that could be interesting if you wanted to yeah. run with that with your character. Or any of a number of naval adventures. The Erie aren't really that much for shipbuilding. The Marquisat are. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Hmm. We can come back to you if you'd like as well. Yeah, if you're still thinking, let's move on and then we come back. Okay. All right. Uh, Dread, where do you call home? I'm thinking one of the uh, northern clearings because you know down the river mm -hmm. fair enough uh so the northern clearings um are sort of a, a three-way alliance between the the sort of denizens the riverfolk company the woodland alliance it's just sort of there's it's a loose coalition there's not any one group sort of like uh uh superseding authority or anything along those lines but uh there is um in order on the map, uh, the Fox Clearing is uh, uh, River Skip. <laughs> and then the, 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 uh, the Rabbit Clearing is River Jump, and that's a little more trading company. Mm -hmm. And then, let's see, what was the mouse one? C cool Water. Hop? Oh. Yeah, so, it, so River Hop is the main clearing, then uh -huh. it goes River Skip, River Jump. And on the mouse side, it's Cool Water. I'll hmm. say uh, River Skip, the rabbit one. That's River Jump, but okay. Okay, yeah. Uh, yeah, so that, that, that's getting up towards the mountains, so yeah, you'd be, you'd be familiar with high altitudes then. All righty, I put that in there. I'll again fix the weird formatting later, but boom. And why did you become a vagabond? Uh, I think I'll go with the thrown out for the crazy idea. <laughs> so naturally, that that leaves me wondering: what sort of crazy ideas did uh, did uh, Gustav have? Okay, so you get a lot of gunpowder, just a lot of it, <laughs> and you pack it all in. Sorry. And go go on. Go on. I'm interested in your literature. You didn't try to make a pomegranate, did you? From the French? <laughs> Dread? Um, I don't know that reference. I'm talking about the hand grenade. 
it mm. comes from the French from palm, from palm like pomegranate. It's a a play at. Uh, oh, I didn't know that. Uh, yep. Oh, and here I was thinking you were going to do like a gunpowder rocket or something to fly <laughs> above it all. Like yeah, that, that hand- definitely won't cause any forest fires. Yeah, the old <laughs> hand grenade was actually like a lot of... I believe it was clay that they used initially, rather than metal, for the fragmentation. Yeah. I, I believe you are correct. Um, yeah, if you, if you want to take some time to think up what yeah. your particular crazy probably, ideas are. Can... If we're doing like the gunpowder jokes, probably blast mining, because mountain... That makes okay. perfect sense. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. What if we detonated a bomb underground? No. <laughs> I think I think the Grand Duchy might have some problems with that. You probably ran into some Grand Duchies that way. <laughs> the, the Grand Duchy is the mole people, just so that everyone's aware. Because I, I Okay. I realize saying that out loud does not Okay, help. I'll I'll actually mark that as the as the, the notoriety as well. <laughs> there, there we go. That's fill in the blank. You do have one stump too many. Right. Okay. Um, so it's, it's intended that at this part of the season, the Grand Duchy and the Corvid Conspiracy, there's been hints that they might exist, but they haven't exactly come to the fore yet. Mm-hmm. This so will matter so it, later. It, it's, in, it's in his uh, backstory. Is the yeah. Cor- out of curiosity yeah. with the Corvid things, they're basically an offshoot of the Eerie, I'm guessing. The Corvid, it, yes and no. The Corvid, the Corvid conspiracy does work within the Eerie, but they are their own sort of separate faction. They're okay. Yeah, yeah that they're yeah. they're kind of anarchists. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that would be the easiest way to describe too. them. They are. Uh, so, what? Who did you leave behind? I'm gonna go with best friend. Okay. Did they? Did your? Did your best friend sort of agree with your ideas on blessed mining? Did they help you? Did they, or were they more of a sort of unfortunate hindrance to you? The nice way of saying, did they sell you out? I mean, yeah, but I was trying to be polite. Yeah, I'm leaning more towards the, like, neutral on it. So, okay. like, just caught slightly in the effects of it. And then, so, I get shipped down the river and then... Okay. Okay. Um, and so, who have you served the most and who have you served a special entity with? I think we talked about who the special enmity is. Well, yeah, the the Grand Duchy. Mm-hmm. I had, well, I guess, if it's the uh, the River Traders, he's, what was the Riverpool River Company. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah, they we we've thrown them in there, so it is perfectly reasonable for you to have uh, uh, made some friends with the River Folk Company. All righty. Yeah, please let me please let me highlight things. Okay. And just for the note, we're going to count the um, Bitter Bureau Bank as allied with the Riverpool Company for the purpose of uh, fame and inf- infamy. Yeah, because money. Yeah. So how long ago was the war? The now. War? Nah, the previous one. The the Civil War for the birds. Or the Dalmatians. The, that one. Oh, uh, it was uh, probably less than a full year ago. Excellent. It was sort of like conquest. You know, it's sort of like Britain in the uh, in in the the sixteen hundred seventeen hundreds of ah, we finished a war. Don't you know that's when the war starts. <laughs> Mopping up operations could be said to be continuing from that, in fact. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, Sounds like you have some ideas then? Yeah. But, uh, Spud, do you want to go first, or should I go now? Uh, I can finish up yours, and then I'll I'll go. Yeah. So, I was exiled for causing too much havoc. I was a soldier in the previous war. 
and mm-hmm. uh, did a bit too much. <laughs> burned some bit, things that I shouldn't have burned. Did a bit too much. Man, I like yeah. that description for war crimes. And uh, <laughs> I left behind my only defender. What I did was just... Even they couldn't defend it. I see. Do you know where that defender ended up, out of curiosity? They're probably still back in the homeland. Okay. Perhaps still in the military. Okay. All right. Uh, I assume faction you've served the most would be the Marquisat. Same with the Enmity. Same with the Enmity? All right. <laughs> Works for yeah. me. All right. And our Vagrant Mint. Uh... I call the forest my home, probably some manner of hideout near River Hop. Okay. That's fair. And why did you become a vagabond? Uh It's just the most tempting option. I think I fell in love in love with the wrong denizen. It's a really good option. <laughs> mm-hmm. Maybe someone <laughs> very high up in either the Irie or the Marquisate. <laughs> okay. Um who the the you know with clearing near river hop it it very much could be either yeah with the fact that you have stolen military rank insignias from both sides did you fall in love with just one of the wrong dentists i may have or... been a little too charming a player. in quick succession <laughs> a paramour might you have been mistaken for a spy for the Marquisette, as in a certain spy? Weren't we talking about uh, another uh, player character um, having been exiled because their family had relations with a suspected spy? There was that? Mm-hmm. Yeah. It was... <laughs> that was, uh, that was uh, 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 so- Scralton. His parents were uh, basically one caught one of them cheating and sort of cheated back as, you know, to get back as, uh, like, I'm not taking this insult in the the same light. And basically, she went with he, he went with she, a different she, and it happened at a bad time to cast shade on a a higher up uh, nobility. Well, actually, I was, I was thinking possibly, so either take the slot for one of them, or, you know, newbies with characters being newbies with characters, take the slot with both of them. Hmm. <laughs> mm, I... Wow, I'm wow. too much? <laughs> probably, from what I have in mind, probably just works better if it was just one person... Okay. From the IRE and then one person from the from the Marquis at Okay. Fair enough. Although maybe one of those if for the IRE was involved in the incident of Stralden's character? I don't know. Possibly. I mean, uh that could uh that could turn back on to the connections, which we will discuss in a little bit. Um we'll 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 dip back into that, I think. What have you left behind? Or who have you left behind? Um, who hasn't he left behind? My loved ones. <laughs> Fair enough. And uh, let's go with what faction have you served the most, and which one have you earned enmity? Uh, I think I've served the denizens the most in a sort of Robin Hood <laughs> type of way. All right. You know, pulled off some good cons that helps. Uh, you know, help the denizens, you know, the regular folk against the uh, powers in play around here. Mm-hmm, the powers that be. Yeah. And I might have just... I, I might have earned enmity with both of the... Both the Irie and the Marquis. <laughs> if, I'm if fine with allow that. that. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. I'll allow that. Mark both of them. Yeah. Yeah. I will... I'm, I am also perfectly good with that. Uh, if you want to make more trouble for yourself, go for it. Why not? <laughs> Or just make more trouble, period. True. True enough. Yeah, okay. I think that's where we're at. All right. So that's backgrounds for uh, uh, everybody but our scoundrel character. Oh, no, we did. Sorry, we did scoundrel. My yeah. my bad brain jumped around a bit. Um, 
Okay, let's talk about nature. Um, so, uh, the nature is, real fast, um, the nature involves one of the, uh, some more rule stuff real fast. So, um, there are three tracks with which characters can sort of take damage. Uh, there's injury, which is physical exhaustion. Decay is sort of a, uh, a material slash budgetary concern would be the way to think about it. Um, because uh, like decay means like, oh, I'm using, uh, I'm running out of supplies to travel through the woods or um, my stuff is breaking, that sort of thing. And exhaustion is just pretty much exactly what it says. How long have you been running around doing stuff? How tired are you? Um, and nature lets you clear out your exhaustion completely, no matter how, uh, how full up that might be. And uh, uh, it usually involves what sort of things you like to do. Uh, and I believe, as mentioned earlier, we have for the Arbiter, uh, the Arbiter chose Punisher, I believe, was the one you were saying, correct? Yeah, I'm sort of debating between, I sort of looking to think about sort of like the character and all, like, mm -hmm. Punisher is tempting, actually, but I think like with the way I can sort of picture him, with a lot of the some of the other things I picked, like the weapon skills and whatnot, mm -hmm. and his drives, I think Defender actually fits him better. Okay, all right. Trying to prevent other people from going through the same sort of stuff you've gone through. Yes. All right. Uh, and I believe Nail, you you said arsonist. Yeah, I mean honestly, both of them would work, but mm -hmm. I'm gonna go with arsonist. Okay. Uh, Gustav, are you a perfectionist or a radical? Hmm. That's one of the things I was debating with it, because when you look at it, it could go either way, mm -hmm. but... Yeah. Well, look at the drives, perhaps. That might give you an, a, a bit more why, like, with the... I, I already... I already chose two of them at the beginning because it was just like these make the most sense for a right. semi-heroic character. So, mm -hmm. like I went with mine was uh, like loyalty and uh, I'm, I'm sorry, wait, I want to make sure I got the right ones here. I went with justice and honor. So defender was a pretty clear one for me in that sense. Okay, and I'll so. I'll talk about drives for the audience in a little bit, but. Uh... Mm -hmm. Uh, I think I might just go radical because it's one of those. <laughs> well, if we're going with the slightly crazy destructive savior party, yeah, that seems very much in line. Because <laughs> I mean, honestly, we've got an arsonist yeah. in the party. So... All right, and uh, uh, Spud. Drunk or hustler? Uh, see, like, I feel like drunk would be, like, mechanically easier. Like, probably. If I'm, if I'm just looking to clear my exhaustion track, but, like, man, I gotta go hustler. That's just me. <laughs> hey, complicated cons have a lot of flexibility on them, so I think you're probably fine. Yeah, I, that's, that's my whole character right there. That's, <laughs> I'm, a, okay. I'm, a, I'm a con squirrel. <laughs> I love that so much. <laughs> All right, so uh, uh, Stradivarian mentioned it a few minutes ago, but uh, drives are the next thing on our list of things to choose, and they are, uh, mechanically, they are the way you level up. Um, when you accomplish your drive, uh, you, you effectively level up, and you can choose sort of new capabilities for your character. Um, so in... in the Arbiter's case, in uh, and Stralden's case, uh, their drives are justice. You advance when you pursue and achieve justice for someone deeply wronged by another powerful denizen. And honor. You advance when you uphold your sense of personal honor at great cost to yourself or your allies. Um, but there was also the options of loyalty. Name your master, the character to whom you are loyal. You advance when you obey an order at great cost to yourself. Or protection. Name your ward. You advance when you protect them from significant danger. Or when seasons turn and your ward is safe. Um, and these are, like I said, mechanically they're how you level up. But flavor-wise, they are sort of your character's 
well, drives. It's their motivations. Um, so we have Straldins. Uh, I guess next on our list is uh, our scoundrel, Nail. Nail. Well, I'm definitely going to go with Thrills for one of them. <laughs> Fair enough. You advance when you escape from certain death or incarceration. Which would also go really well with the combative nature. It definitely would. Mm. But it also goes well with arsonist because hey, you're yeah. you're going to cause a lot of damage. It's pretty easy for you to accidentally get caught up in it. Indeed. Mm. And I guess for the next one, I'll go with crime. Crime. You advance. I feel like that fits <laughs> I am going to be the campaign. odd one out, aren't I? You advance whenever you score a significant haul or pull off an illegal caper against impressive odds. <laughs> and Stradivarian, I, I kind of feel like the Arbiter is almost by default kind of the odd one out <laughs> from, from the rest of the Vagabonds. Gustav, what are your drives? Uh, well, I had grabbed greed and ambition at the beginning because it's like thinking about it. I was already planning the thrown out of my home for crazy ideas because, you know, mm-hmm. mad science mode. And hey, you work with the Riverfell Company or you have worked with the Riverfell Company. They will yeah. definitely pay good money. Yeah, the other option was if we were continuing do slightly comical revenge against the uh, Grand Duchy. <laughs> revenge against the mole people that nobody knows exists yet <laughs> yeah it's a really good that's really good i won't lie maybe um, if we come back to this yeah if we come back to it definitely and hey if the kickstarter manages to hit 40k or 400k um then we will uh have a roll 20 like official system so yeah i will that's... have access to it <laughs> nice It's currently 381.776. With 13 days to go. Oh, pretty solid then. Yeah, no, it's doing, it's doing very well. It's at 1.7 million, isn't it? No. No, it's a different one. Probably a different one, yeah. It's it's in the hundred thousands, which is like already several thousand times what it asked for. Yeah. And like, if you think, like, look at the uh, slightly off topic, Mm -hmm. the uh, clan invasion Kickstarter for BattleTech. They, I forget how much they raised, but it was over a million dollars. Jeez. And Heck. like, we're, it got to the point where it actually broke the pledge manager system <laughs> because trying to manage like somewhere around like I think like eighteen different uh lances slash stars depending on which faction you're part of, they have different names, but it's like four mechs. How do, like, the combinations possible were such that trying to sort everything out actually broke the the pledge manager, and they're working with the company to fix it. Wow. Fair enough. Yeah, well, they've, they've done really well. Yeah, 381 of... <laughs> All right. Uh, so, Mint, what are your drives? Uh, chaos for <laughs> when I topple a tyrannical or dangerously overbearing figure or order. And uh, clean pause uh, when I obtain something valuable or accomplish a difficult goal without any non vagabond having a strong evidence of my wrongdoing. Very nice. So, okay. taking people down without them even knowing i was involved would be my ideal okay uh next up we have moves everyone gets to pick three moves from their sheet unless you are the tinker in which case it tells you um your extra move um so uh yeah it's it's these are the sort of bonuses you can do for like either fighting or for uh uh, you know basically special moves that your particular playbook gives you access to outside of uh outside of the uh, uh, normal moves that everyone else has which uh in some cases can be things like just straight up murder 
Yep. Yeah. I've chosen uh, the first one is Brute, which gives me a plus one to Might, which allows me to, because of the Arbiter special, allows me to bypass the normal plus two cap. And become plus three, which means that Arbiter very strong. Yep. Mm. The next one is Carry a Big Stick. When you trust fate to see you through, by relying on strength and force without forethought or planning, roll might instead of luck. Normally I have a minus one on my luck roll. Mm-hmm. But this would let me uh, roll with plus three. Yeah, that's in that, pretty in good. That, in that very specific situation, we're just like, screw it, <laughs> charge in. <Yep. laughs> What's that? The- this, <laughs> this building is on fire? I bet I can save people. <laughs> Kick down door. Which ties into the actually the third one I've picked. I've picked Guardian. All right. We defend someone from again. We're considering my drive, which is Defender, and with mm-hmm. Justice, Honor, and I went with Guardian here. When you defend someone or something from an immediate NPC or environmental threat, roll with Might. On a hit, you keep them safe. And then there's some uh, there's some interesting sort of variants for that based on how good the roll was. Um, so yeah, those are those are some solid moves. You are a very sort of uh, you are a very protecty type. I like it. Mm-hmm. I, I'm just man. I'm just picturing a shield with like the the peacock feather sort of display on it, and it's just it's <laughs> really cool. <laughs> oh yeah, you're the, you're the peacock arbiter. Yeah, yes. <laughs> that's that's a heck of a mental image. It yeah. sure is. And uh, ambiguous is what I went with for the look. Yes, ambiguous. <laughs> um, all right. Uh, Nail. Any moves coming to mind? Right off the bat, arsonist and create to destroy. Fair enough. Uh, those are. Uh, you want to you want to read those out for our audience? Yeah. Arsonist is when you wreck something with flagrantly dangerous means, such as explosives or uncontrolled flames. You roll with luck instead of might. And create to destroy is when you use available materials to rig up a dangerous device, roll with finesse. On a hit, you cobble together something that will do what you want. One time. On a 10 plus, choose one. On a 7 to 9, choose three. The device is one, more dangerous than intended. Two, larger or more unwieldy than than intended. And or three, more temperamental and fragile than intended. On a miss, you need some vital component to finish it. The GM will tell you what. So, even a perfect success, this this object is not going to be exactly what you want. But it will probably still do exactly what you want. Yep. <laughs> and it fits in with Arsonist, because sure more often than not, it's going to be very dangerous. Sure is. <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember... The uh, alchemy fire from the first session I was in with DCO. So. And what is the other one you, you would like to take? Because you get three. Yep. For the other one, I'm between Daredevil, Danger Mask, and Better, Luck, better Lucky Than Good. Okay. Uh, with what we've talked about in the past, as far as your character's backstory and their time in the Marquis Marquisat militia, Daredevil sounds really, yeah, really in line with it. If it just as as my sort of thought process, but you know, it's your character. I'm not, I'm not gonna take control of it for obvious reasons. Yeah, we've never really talked about a an alternate idea, more or less. So, mm-hmm. like. And of course, the other, this is another thing, uh, the danger mask is the, it says mask, disguise, or outfit you wear. That could also just as easily be like, I'm putting on my old Marcusat uniform, <laughs> oh, and I'm going that's to a cause good point. chaos. That's a very good point. I hadn't thought about that. Huh. I hadn't either. Hmm. Well, we can come back if you'd like. I'm going to go with Daredevil. Daredevil? Yeah. All right. 
Daredevil, you are at your luckiest when you go into danger without hesitation. When you dive into a dangerous situation without forethought or planning, treat yourself as having luck armor with two boxes of decay. It automatically goes away once the danger is passed. Nice. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> like I said, really fits with the soldier who kind of just went out and ruined things. <laughs> wow. All right. Uh, Gustav, where do you want your workshop to be? That is a good question. Because it doesn't have to be in your in the, the clearing you are from. It could be anywhere. I can't just have this image of a, like a houseboat floating. A houseboat? Yeah. yeah, but then you, of course, when you start getting like the hammer, the anvil and all that, you get sparks in a boat. Not a good idea. Well, I mean, uh, <laughs> the... I, I feel like that I, that could just as easily be a downside that we just add to the list. The other option is just having like a uh, like a hole hidden fr- near the river because as an otter, mm-hmm. I figure good swimmer, so just have like a hidden. What about under way. like under the? You, you mentioned you were having you mentioned revenge, right? Didn't you? As one of your drives? As a, poss- as a possible drive for it. Like, if we want to... I can s- I could switch, like... No, I, 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 I must have missed you that. That's fine. But what about, like, a, a spot, like, basically sort of underneath, like, a house or something like that? Like, from the... You mentioned, like, from the river. You're, you're, like, given that you can swim well, why not something that basically takes... Because one of the options is, is difficult to reach. That would be qualifying under that as a downside. Yeah, it would be difficult to reach, and especially like with certain materials that can't really be waterlogged, that you would have to dry out or something like that. Yeah, actually, I think I will pull off ambition and take revenge as the drive. Okay, is your foe going to be the duchy? Yep. Okay. Uh, um, I like. It- if you wanted to take Strat's suggestion of something under a house, um, you could do it under that meeting house. Possible, yeah. It would certainly be a little difficult to reach above and beyond the difficulty of getting waterproof materials in because that's not a small meeting house. That's quite a bit of a bridge with a house built above it. Mm-hmm. Well, I was going to say... Is there, like, a mill or something on the river? Yeah. Well, there's a sawmill uh, that built by the Marquisa, but it's uh, trying to sell to neutral stuff. Um, th- we, we can say there is also, like, a uh, grain-grounding uh, water mill uh, upstream. Yeah. Yeah. Because okay. I was thinking, like, have the grain as the, like, uh, public face of the area. Okay. Okay, so then publicly you would be owning the uh, grain mill? Yeah, because I figured that way, like, get the grain in, mill it, and sell the flour. That would raise money to fit the greed ambition. Yep. Or the greed drive. <laughs> it sure would. And also, uh, just as a general sort of, you know, fun thing, fl- flour can be extremely flammable. Oh, God, yes. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> If you've seen some of the ble- ble- blebbies, I believe they're called, mm-hmm. when the, what happened when a spark takes a, a catch the flower, especially finely uh, ground, yeah, it's scary. It sure is. And you'd almost certainly have finely ground flower um, able to distribute. Mm-hmm. Why well, do you have the feeling that Azure is going to be living in the mill as well? Eh. Maybe. Maybe. Well, it's just one of those, as an arsonist, have an easily accessible supply. He may be a local supplier. Maybe. Uh, yeah. Okay. No, I'm probably living out, like, behind in the forest somewhere. Okay. Well, well, none of you are currently living in town, because as vagabonds, you, you're not really expected to stay long. So... Um, so I'll, let me tell you the uh, the uh, clearings like on the river, so you can see if there's if there's anyone that stands out. So uh, we've got river hop, skip, and jump, obviously. 
Um, there's also to the south, uh, there is the Fox Clearing is Stamp Bridge. Um, and the Mouse Clearing is Rust Ridge. And those are the ones on the river. So if any of those stick out to you as like, yeah, that seems like it'd be a good place for it. I'm debating about Hop, but thinking more Stamp Bridge. Stamp Bridge? Well, it, it's one of those like, which clearings would be more likely to have a, you know, grain mill would be like mouse or rabbit. But I'm, I'm, I so mean, I, I'm, you could just as easily argue, it could be argued that like the Fox folk being the sort of steel makers could be the ones responsible for like at least maintaining the mill. Yeah, true. Yeah, I guess we'll go with stamp bridge. Then. Plus it, a lot of flour and all you can use to make wheats and like a lot of the drinks too, like beers and stuff like that too potentially for grind if you're grinding at a mill oh, yeah oh, okay yeah, a so... lot of a lot of alcohol that comes from that too sure is all righty so um we you, you we can set your uh workshop in stamp bridge in the uh in the flour mill so what sort of uh what sort of features do you want on it I'm looking at that and I'm debating because, like, booby traps would probably not be a good idea with it being a mill. Yeah, probably. Um, being a flour mill makes it definitely dependent on a local resource to wit the re the wheat. Mm -hmm. That could be a, one of the downsides. Yeah. 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 So between that and the difficult to reach, because the entrance to it would be underneath mm -hmm. the mill. I mean, that's just yeah. a trap door, though. Well, water entrance, so... Oh. Right. Well, so then it also... You're just, you're just swimming behind the water wheel? <laughs> that's well, actually... actually that's, that that, up. that's actually pretty that's solid That's really place. cool, actually. That's uh, really cool, yeah. actually. Well, I would think to look there, because, like, you're having to swim through something that can crush you. Or, like, there's, like, just, like, a little gap between the, the wheel yeah, and the wall. Yeah, there's that otter you said. Yeah. Yeah, I'm I'm figuring like below the level of the wheel, there's the hole that like goes up into a bend. So there's the air pocket, like there is like pipes and stuff allowing airflow into the mill, and yeah. into the area. And actually, since it's at a mill like that and it's on the river, it'd probably have food and water. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Mm hmm. Okay, so and I was going with a forge and anvil, but so we'll figure out the logistics of where to vent the waste heat. Fair enough. Okay, you may so. just have to like basically pour in, like basically sort of literally by pouring in water from the thing, and it gets drained out. Yeah, yeah, dump water yeah. into the river or dump it heat into the river. No one's gonna notice. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. You have a water cooling system. <laughs> hey. So, uh, so three features: food and water, forge and anvil. Um, any which other one do you want to go with? And did you want to go with food and water? Because I know we said it, but I don't know if you were. Yeah, that works. Because I figure if I need a place to hide out. Fair. Yeah. <laughs> what sort I mean, of fool would live in the mill? You got flour there. You've got heat there. You got all the bread you want. <laughs> And you've got water, too, so you can make... That's all you really need for leavened loast. Yeah. That lo then, yeah lo then I figure also, like, if there's, like, fish in the river, you can just grab them while swimming. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Win-win. Fish win. and bread. I think I'll stick a loom as a loom? well. All right. I figure it's one of those, if you've got the water wheel going... Yeah, you can do it as a mill, but you can also use the water wheel to power other stuff. Sure can. Do you have a particular need of fabric? Well, it's a craft good I can sell, Spud, so... I mean, okay, fair. Mm-hmm. But also something that's probably like fire retardant as well might be a yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, that, and it's one of those occasionally need to replace outfits, so... Yeah. All right. Okay, and so we did those. So we did that, and the two downsides are difficult to reach and dependent on a local. Um, 
Okay, repair isn't doesn't need any sort of extra stuff. So what's your other what's your one extra move? Um I'm debating cuz like we got jury rig which is similar to what Azure has except just with cunning a mechanism in general. Mhm. Mm and it but then there's also given give and take which is basically use cunning to wreck stuff. Yeah. Specifically a mechanism or a lock though. Yeah. Well, with some of the things and all, it sort of sounds like you're a bit more of a like hands-on person, and often having to make do with what you have. Like, jury rig could yeah. work because if you you basically sound very, very self-sufficient, that sort of comes with having to. At least it sounds like to me. I may be very wrong, but it sort of sounds like you may be having to oftentimes do what you have to with just your local your local ingenuity. Yeah, that makes sense. So I'll take the jury rig. Okay. All right, all right. Mint, what are your moves? I'm taking Pleasant Facade, obviously. <laughs> yep, fair enough. Uh, when you suck up to or otherwise put up an unsuspecting NPC, roll with Charm. Okay, so this is something I do need explained. What does, like, hold X, hold one, so, for, spend hold one for one mean? What it So what it means is... Uh, it, it the hold three holds two it's actually it is actually explained in that next sentence of spend your hold one for one to deflect their suspicion or aggression away from you onto someone or something else so what it means is uh since it's one for one you can either deflect multiple sorts of suspicion onto another person or you can sort of direct their attention to like three other people if you do really well gotcha okay you can sort of like pick and choose like how like either like how you know how generally suspicious they are of multiple people or like they're definitely never going to suspect you ever for this so, particular like, thing so any any hold x basically is you earn charges for an effect that is immediately explained in the context yes yeah basically. yeah it's basically giving you a mini pool of points for that particular thing and they're all yeah. called hold but each hold applies to a different kind of thing gotcha. yeah in, Would it be I like mean, if? I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just saying, in one of the other powered by the apocalypse systems, uh, one of the things they talk about is like when you investigate a situation or something, you get uh, successes will give you various holds that you can use to ask particular questions, and you can trade them one to one as trade those holds one to one with those questions. Gotcha. So it's sort of like that. So this would sort of be like James Bond walking into the casino. The guard doesn't give him any looks because he looks like a normal patron. You spent one. Then he comes up, sits at the, the big rig, the big table with the high, the big spenders. No one gives him a second look or whatever, and he just then sits down, plays like normal, and just does what he does, and is spent like three for three. Yeah, something basically. like that. Yeah, basically. Or it could be like, "Hey, you're cheating." <laughs> yeah, or or that. Yeah. <laughs> or if you want I, to go with the big dramatic one. <laughs> okay. I just, yeah, I flipped over to the thief playbook and it actually has a hold as well and disappear into the dark which is basically you can spend the hold to pop out of nowhere and stab a guy for plus three <laughs> Great. <laughs> lovely Boink. all right uh mm -hmm. so the other, the next one i'm going to take is charm offensive uh when you play upon an enemy's insecurities concerns or fears to distract them with words during a fight roll with cunning on a hate you create an opening for yourself make any available weapon move against them at plus one or strike quickly and deal entry to them on a 7 to 9, you also tick them off. They aren't listening to you anymore, no matter what you do, until the situation drastically changes. On a miss, you infuriate them. They come at you hard, and you're not prepared. Yep. So, S sticks and stones may break my bones, but words can also hurt me. I I figured you were going with a uh, low blow is certainly going to be remembered. <laughs> <laughs> also true. Actually, actually, I have just decided that... Uh, I don't want to be in fights if I can help it because of my clean okay. pause drive because I'm actually going to take Desperate Smile. Desperate Smile, okay. Instead of Charm Offensive because that gives me a way to sort of get out of a situation by begging, pleading, or basing myself with Charm instead of Luck. <laughs> That'll work. Uh, and then for the third one, I'm going to take Pocket Sand. 
which is just pocket yeah. sand. You take the weapon move blind when you throw something to blind an opponent, run with cunning instead of finesse. Yep. <laughs> I do like how they just threw that in. It's it's oh, just yeah. pocket sand. It's just, <laughs> it's just pocket sand. And everyone knows immediately what it goes to. It's <laughs> Exactly. It's, it's pretty on the nose. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, now, weapon skills. Um, everyone gets uh, one. Like, there's a uh, next to your drives. There's wep- a weapon skill you can pick from. Uh, it needs to be one of the bolded ones. Everybody can pick one. If you have questions, uh, they are. Uh, one moment. They are under the weapon moves area, but you can also just read them out and I uh, say like, uh, what does this one do? And I will let you know what it does. Mm-hmm. I'm picking with mine parry because I start with a weapon that has the option to cleave. Fair enough. Yes. Uh, your weapons can also give you these abilities. So basically picking a weapon skill just means you can do it no matter what weapon you're using. Ah. Gotcha. Uh, I'm, I'm going to pick... In- I'm going to go with improvise. Improvise? Okay. Uh, do you want me to tell you specifically what it does? Uh, I... Th- I looked at it earlier and I yes. decided on it, and then I was like, "No, nah, I don't need to remember that." But okay, improvised oh. weapon. You can make a weapon out of improvised materials around you. Roll with cunning, etc. Mm. On a hit, you make it, and uh, the GM will tell you range tag and at least one other tag based on materials used. On a seven to nine, it also has a weakness. So uh, tags are, um, you know, it's like you know, metal, wood, etc ranged uh short uh intimate range stuff like that um and you know if you if you broke off a chair leg or whatever it could have the tag weak to fire so or something along those lines uh okay um nail any weapon coming any weapon move coming to mind quick shot quick shot yep. okay And to have that read out real fast, uh, when you fire a snapshot in an enemy at close range, roll with luck. On a hit, inflict injury. On a 7 to 9, choose 1. On a 10 plus, choose 2. And yep. we can save those for later. Uh, and uh, Gustav, what weapon move comes to mind for you? I'm thinking parry because it's one of those... Uh, I'm thinking between like parry and harry because I have a... I have the smithing hammer, so I could cleave, but my might ain't that good. So. Mm-hmm. Okay. Uh, parry is uh, pretty much exactly what it says for those in the audience. It's yep. when you try to parry the attacks of an enemy at close range, mark exhaustion and roll with finesse. On a hit, you consume their attention. On a 10 plus, pick three. On a 7 to 9, pick one. You inflict morale harm on them, which uh, morale is an HP bar for NPCs. Um, if you if you deplete that, they can either cower or run away. <laughs> that kind of thing. Uh, and there's if you disarm your opponent, you don't suffer any harm. There's certain other things that can apply when they're cowed like that, such as if someone had the murder option. Yes. So they could do something mm-hmm. special then. Yes. Uh, Both that's of my the, weapons have the special murder. That, that special being the murder. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so now that we have built everyone's playbooks um we can we have two options here we can just go straight into the next step or we can have everyone sort of just you know not read out directly the sheet but just sort of say like who your character is to sort of like set it in stone do do, Um, do, we still have to do connections 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 are next on the uh, uh like i'm going by the uh the character creation checklist okay uh, and on the, the ninth step is, once everyone is done with their character creation through step eight, go around and introduce each character. Yeah, let's just let's, let's have a final record here, yeah. Yeah. I am uh, Mint the Squirrel Vagrant. Uh, I'm a charming, cunning little fellow who is a hustler by trade. That's about, that's about it. <laughs> There's more to it, but I I am Straldin Yonor, a at the moment wandering cell sword. Uh, uh, my luck may change, my luck may get worse or better, but my skill with the blade will see me through. I am Nail, 
a black cat scoundrel. Real name, Johan Loxler, Johan Lockler, but no one calls him that. Uh, originally a soldier from the Marcus at Homeland, uh, was dishonorably discharged and exiled to the Woodlands. And then Dread. Yeah, and Gustav, an otter tinkerer who is involved in a feud with the Grand Duchy, which no one's really sure if they exist or not at this point. <laughs> so, everyone just thinks they're kind of crazy. Great. <laughs> Works perfectly. God, I love that so much. He's the old man at the mill. It's the perfect alibi. It yeah, sure is. especially when you consider like otters are probably not that very common beyond like you see them in the boats doing trading and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. They would be pretty much a given in the maritime field. Oh yeah. yeah. The, the, the river folk company is largely sort of uh, managed by otters, but they, they employ all sorts of amphibious uh, uh, forest folk. All right. I think it's time we move on to connections. All right. So this is probably one of my favorite parts of the Powered by the Apocalypse system, uh, and particularly this one. We're going to really dig into backstory and make and see how your characters interacted before any of this began. So we're gonna uh, we're gonna look at the connections. We're gonna go around in a circle, do one at a time, sort of thing. Um, so we'll you know everyone has two connections in their list. Um, but we'll only do the first one for the first go around. So, Stralden, protector. You mm. once protected someone from a mortal blow during a fight, and you would do it again. Who are they, and why? I would say that I protected the uh, our our little otter tinker there from a fellow that was probably that thought from the from the. I guess it would be from the Marquet that he thought he was being cheated on his uh, the uh, bread that he uh, bought and chose to uh, take umbrage at the fact. Okay. I protected him again. I would say I, why I did why I did it was again for that reason. But why I would do it again is that he was willing to uh, fix up my uh, some of my uh, particulars that were in a bit of a rough state. Okay. So, uh, uh, Dread, how, uh, this, you know, this is the part where we get to all sort of work together. Um, Dread, how, what, what sort of situation did you think sort of initiated all of this? Like, how, how did, how did Gustav feel about, uh, encountering this vagabond, uh, peacock? I'm going to say professional. Okay. So you you two have been working well together for a while. You read easily. Okay. Yeah. So so would you say that that's, that wasn't the first encounter you'd had with uh, Stralden? The probably not because I figure doing like repairs for armor and such would be like the first connection, and then when they you know save the life, that would be like definitely repairs for free. All right, that's a perfectly fair fair way to go about it. As I said, he could keep him protected as well as a hands-off kind of deal. Mm -hmm. Sounds like a perfectly reasonable connection. All right, uh, Nail. Friend, Blank and I once met and pulled off a mad impossible stunt together. What did you do and why? Hmm. I'm going to say a uh, mint. Yeah, what did we do? Yeah. Ah, we robbed something somewhere for the coin and the thrills. Okay. Uh, Not well, exactly well, sure where. Perhaps the mark is at. Stole from, from them. 
you do have military ranking. You have stolen military rankings from both sides, you did say. Yeah. Maybe. Is that how you two met? Was uh, in regards to that particular heist? Was that a trinket of perhaps a sent off bunch of, uh, or the, the trinket kept as uh, memorabilia from a very successful heist? Uh, yeah, I think, uh, I think that'll be how I got my, uh, insignia from the Marquisite. Okay, so, yeah. so, I am curious. Yeah, obviously with that, you, you either infiltrated some, uh, military member's home or, uh, uh, or some sort of, like, base or something along those lines. What, what, where do you think you went into to pull off this mad impossible stunt together? Probably, uh, probably military base. <laughs> I was thinking maybe even the castle itself. Ooh, that's... What, like a, always... like the Marquisat Keep in the area. Okay. Yeah, yeah sure. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the Marquisat Keep would be the only castle equivalent in the whole woodland. Uh, the Erie yeah. aren't really good ones yeah. for castles. They have roosts. That is what I meant when I said castle, the keep. I just wanted to double check. Similar. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, so so what, what do you feel like were the sort of side effects of that? Aside from, you know, general sort of uh, frustration with the Marquisat towards you guys. I might have had to... Break a few hearts. Oof. In my in my getaway. Lady killer. Yeah. <laughs> uh yep. and I'd say I probably took most of the blame for it. Yeah, fair, fair. Um Okay, hold on, sorry, I'm I'm doing some text editing to make sure that uh please let me please let me put in names. Okay. Uh, so, a anything else you want to sort of add to your to your friend connection with Mint? Uh, I I don't think we actually answered the question. Why did you do it? Was it just for the money, or was there a, a further reason for it? Well, I was kind of annoyed that they exiled me. So I was like, you know what? Screw you! I'm going to steal your stuff. Mm -hmm. and, and, and why did and you also choose... it was fun and the the con i was running needed uh needed someone who could at least pass temporarily as a marquisite soldier so and i was one so you were so yeah okay um so uh mint your first connection is family uh did you want that to be did you want that to be nail or did you want to choose someone else for it uh, I was actually thinking of picking uh, Stralden for okay. the... Because, see, I, I, I pissed off both the Irie and the Marquisette. So, and Stralden seems to be the Irie contact. Mm -hmm. So, uh, after Stralden and I pulled off an impressive heist and stole something very valuable from the Irie... My bad choice has landed me in dire straits, but they bailed me out, and we've been close ever since. Okay. Okay. I'm going to say that valuable thing was a high-ranking insignia, or maybe even, like, collection of insignias. <laughs> from, like, a general or something. Like, the, the, the whole, like, you know, chest of, like, just decorative mm -hmm. medals and whatnot. <laughs> if it was from the, 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 the Eerie, respectively, he would need... Um... Well, just the knowledge of what was valuable there, because it might be different from the with the Eerie than it would be for the Marquisat. Could also be you getting revenge on someone that uh, had Justice, to do with your yes. family losing their stuff. Mm -hmm. That too. Yeah. How how did you, Stralden? How did you bail out uh, your your heist friend? How do you think that happened? A bit from the his reputation, 
both as someone of as skill with a blade as well as the the fact that he earned that skill with the blade in the nature of did you want is this worth laying down your lives for with the kind of a direct challenge to them and with the nature of the nature of the some of them they ran rather than okay okay so so this heist occurred uh mint was summarily tracked down by some some airy soldier airy soldiers and Stralden basically stepped in the way and said you you have two options here one of them one of them is you dead one of them is you wingless the other is you going back to your roost wow that's pretty awesome i'm not gonna lie yeah, that that would qualify you as family, as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> yeah. Um. Okay. Yeah, I like that. Um. Okay, give me just a moment to get this down. Uh, protector. Like I said, like he has a. When you think about it, he's pretty a pretty capable person physically, and he mm-hmm. has a natural charisma as well. So yeah, he could sell that kind of threat. Yeah. And uh, even if, uh, even if you know, your reputation with the Irie is not fantastic, you know, they still know of you, and they would yes. know your reputation. So whew. The good and the bad. Like, there's a duality yes. to it. Definitely. Okay. Um, all right, all right. Uh, I guess let's move back to the top then. Uh, Stralden, partner. Blank and I helped, take a fa- helped a faction take control of a clearing and share responsibility for it. Let's see, um, who, let's see, we've got, he wouldn't be much for the Marcusat, but, um, what are, what are the other factions that people have? Um, there, so there's the, the Airy, the Marcusat, the Woodland Alliance, the Denizens are technically their own sort of faction, it's just, you know, this, you know, this realm is for the people, not for anyone in particular. Um, there's also the Rip, the Riverfield Company, the, uh, Grand Duchy, and the uh, uh, yeah, I'm just trying to figure out from who among here is among like some of the more locals. I mean, because I mentioned that's probably after that he probably would have chosen to sort of leave a bit from the area and head this way with things. And one of the locals here probably through, I'd I'd guess um, he'd help them that were already there sort of cement themselves. I'm trying to figure out who among here that I might be able to do that with. That might that might tie into my denizens. Uh... Uh, prestige. Yes, it very well could. To, okay. You know, in a sort of helping the people in a sense. Yeah, l- not, I not could like, go not, with that. Not like the denizens are themselves like a named group, but like in terms of reputation with just the unaligned, you know, the unaffiliated folk. Just the pe- yeah, people like basically, to... this is a a bird you can trust because he's done stuff for the people. Yeah. I, sort of basically, sort of going with the honorable nature of like. This is someone that you can count to look out for you. And and going on with my whole Robin Hood nature thing. Yeah, hmm. all right. The little John to his Robin Hood. Uh, that's really cool, actually. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Because, as I said, like, you've, got the ma- you've got the mask and the icon of the Robin Hood, but little John never did have the mask. Nope. <laughs> <laughs> no, little John did not. All right. Uh, Nail. Partner, Blank and I destroyed a faction's resource on behalf of an opposing faction. Why? Hmm. I'm gonna say that uh, Gustav and I uh, blew up some of the... uh, the duchy's supplies <laughs> okay so i i just want to be perfectly clear here so you helped blow up a faction you don't necessarily know exists supplies yep. <laughs> i mean hey i like fire you uh, true true so i get to blow stuff just, up. Well, just, just like let's blow something up and you're like okay well that's well, like, don't, don't you want to hear more about it no 
<laughs> yeah, and say it's, when you think about smoke and something in tunnels, fire and smoke like that in the kind of tunnels mm -hmm. and all. Yeah, you, you could have actually caused like problems throughout with more than just them, technically. Mm -hmm. Plus, also you got the fact it could have been a front, like they had a front looking like they were part of the Marquisette. True. True indeed. Um, so, uh, uh, what what faction do you think you t like hired you two to go and to do this? Hmm. Could have been just the denizens if you were causing trouble. True. Yeah. Could have been or it could have been the uh, River Folk Trading Company if we were mining for supplies by blowing up the mountains. True. Could have been that the River Folk Company was, uh, you know, saw the supposed front uh, and mm -hmm. was like, hey, they're encroaching on our turf. A, a rich iron vein, a good coal mine. Yeah. Those kind of things are worth a lot of value. Mm-hmm. Even gold would have been like reasoned. Gold, silver, copper, any of those could have easily been worth uh, a lot of value, especially if it was a good prospective vein. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So does that feel good? Or what, what, what else would you like to add to that? I'm fine with how it is. All right. Anything you want to add, Dred? Works for me. Okay. But also just probably Nail will be the family connection for me because had each other's backs when we were run out of a clearing. <laughs> yeah, uh, I imagine that aforementioned uh, side effects of blowing up stuff underground definitely maybe chased some, got some people to chase you out of the area. Yep. All right, and finally, Mint, Watcher, Blank saw through one of my cons and turned it back on me. How? Why did we forgive each other? Uh, I'm going to say Gustav saw through one of my cons. Mostly, okay. mostly because we don't have a connection yet, but... Uh... I don't know. What would uh what kind of con was I trying to run on you? You may have been trying to defend something. Or you could have been trying him to get him to repair your armor without paying. Or repair your items. That sounds more like it. The I don't know, that's to... that's not like big enough. Like I said, a uh, priceless family heirloom or whatever that, like, some of the old, like, metals or whatever like that that may have like, rusted or been scuffed or like uh, that. I was, trying, I was trying to low-key get you to help me with a forgery. Ooh, there we go. And you kind of realized that I was trying to make I something have, fake for swapping out. I have the perfect gift for this. I'm just Googling it fast. <laughs> okay. Oh, that's thought it'd be interesting. So you tried, you tried to get him to uh, sort of forge something for you, and then I assume that would be something you would end up pinning on him had he not caught you in the act. Yeah, yeah, I was definitely <laughs> gonna. He was definitely gonna be my fall guy. Okay. You know, nothing personal. Just these things just go. These, goes. Th these things go smoother if you know there's someone to take the blame. Yeah. Got to have, got to keep those paws clean. You are a squirrel. Okay. Uh, I guess the important part, why did we forgive each other? It's a fake. Okay. Probably because saw through it, but it was still amusing. It, it's, forgive me because he's just that kind of guy, really. <laughs> it may have been the quality of the work you tried, like, it could be that. I think the forgiveness might be more on one side than the other, <laughs> perfectly honest. Yeah. You did kind of tip him off and prevent me from running the con. But without, not in a way that got me actually caught, so. Just, just in a way of like, hey, maybe do something else. 
And which is a shame because that was going to be a really nice job, but. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, Gustav's the watcher who can see through me. <laughs> Fair enough. Well, it's uh, it's actually you can figure them out. Ah, yeah, like you learned from your interactions with them. Mm -hmm. So they so pulled you... one over on you, but now you know that, and you can pull one over on, and you can figure that out when they're doing that again. G Gustav pulled, you know, pulled one over on you, but now you know Gustav's tell, basically. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. So uh, yeah, so uh, as as might be sort of described by that, uh, for those in the audience, um, connections are obviously one flavorfully very cool. Uh, two, mechanically, they give everyone sort of a bonus. Um, for example, protector. Uh, uh, Stralden's protector for uh, protector connection for Gustav means that uh, if they are in a reach, or if they are in reach, mark exhaustion to take a blow meant for them. If you do, take plus one ongoing to weapon moves for the rest of the scene. Which means that if Stralden is within reach of Gustav, Stralden can like take a blow and start fighting back stronger. Um, or, uh, or, as mentioned, uh, uh, Mint can see through any of Gustav's potential uh, uh, lies. Uh, should... which, which does mean that he totally believes in the Grand Duchy existing. Yes. I believe that you believe it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe that you're not, tr you're not telling some elaborate, deliberate lie. <laughs> Yes. That yes. Doesn't yes, yes. necessarily mean that I believe in the entire veracity of what you're constantly raving about. It's it's a lot to take in this idea of a kingdom under our very feet. Yeah. Moles. Who's ever well, seen a mole? Exist, they'll be pissed at me. <laughs> Maybe just a little. Just like everyone else. So, when are the naked mole rat ninjas? Oh, that's not until season three when we've jumped the shark. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder how that shark's doing now. Hmm. Probably it's probably well. <laughs> yeah, that shark got a contract. It was in Jaws. It actually worked out really well for it. Oh. All right. I think that's character creation done for yeah, I think right. it's time we get into the main story in the hour we have left. Yeah, well, so we had a minor plot for this one into the remaining two sessions. OK. Actually, did, did you want to do the briefing first and then the um, artist or just the artist and then move the briefing to the uh, next session? Um, you kind of cut out for me a bit. Um, so we have the briefing and the artist. Which one do you do? You want to do the briefing and then the artist in this session, or do you want to do the artist and then the briefing in next session? I think the briefing would be more uh, more in line with. I think that that's the most clear setup for everything else. Okay. All right. So if we're all ready, um, character generation's all done. On to the actual scene. Okay. okay. So the. The four of you have had some, or no, I lost the beef by the for a moment. Um, the four of you have had some adventures before, um, and so you know each other. So each of you has received an invitation uh, to report to the bank uh, after hours. So it's late at night, maybe uh, roughly sunset. All the bank personnel have gone home except. For one badger, uh, who you know is one of one of the upper management, he's waiting for you in the unlocked lock. How do you make your approach? Hmm. We have an Where open. We? we have an open invitation, right? Uh, no, it's an invitation to meet this person at this location at this time. Hmm. And specifically, the four of you. Getting messages to vagabonds is not exactly an easy prospect. So uh, it's, it's someone. Yeah, mes we're, we're messages meeting, were dispatched. We're meeting Mr. Johnson. Got it. <laughs> messages were dispatched with scrolls uh, to seek each of the four of you out. So this is a bank. 
Yes. Yes. And we need the to get better need, borough bank. We need to get inside after hours past the well, security staff. Well, no, no, the front, the front door is open. But are yeah, you doing no. any any security on your end anyway? Hmm. I mean, come on, vagabonds being vagabonds here. I want to be wary about it, but I might also just walk right in. Does the, out of curiosity, does the, um, does the badger have a reputation one way or the other? Um, well, he's very strong for a badger. Mm-hmm. And he does look a little odd. Yes. Uh, his, his name is Barrington. Yes. Hmm. So Uh-oh. he's a bear. No, he's a badger. Oh, well, you no, think he's a badger? Oh no! no. You say? <laughs> I've heard of this guy. Uh, you, you, you've, you've heard legends of this bear thing, but you've never actually met a bear that you know. As far as you know, this guy's a badger. Bears are <laughs> kind of the things people whisper about. Yeah. All right. That said, he is strong. So um, he is strong. He. It has a little funny uh, bit about his uh, face, but you've never really noticed. Um, but yeah, he's um, in charge of the local branch. So he must also, have some smarts. And also clearly not very threatened by you to invite four vagrants to the bank while it is unlocked with him as the only person inside. Well, yeah, you, you, you quite. know the security. Mm-hmm. There's a, a bit of a other matters to attend to. This is also about the appearance of strength, too. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Which is the other thing about this. Like, he's projecting that I have the capability. So yes. he's going to, in the matter of things, humor that capability by, as I said, approaching openly with his uh, usual attire, in the most case. And we'll be just walking in there with the, the scroll and it need be if to, to reach for in case of someone chooses to stop him mm-hmm. but just making his way directly there at the appointed time openly and without worrying about who may be watching who may be calling coming if he's dealing honorably then he will be dealing honorably yep, yep. the the manager is there he's uh standing around in the lobby of uh, washington front door waiting for you for to arrive I'm suspicious of this because why would the bank want me <laughs> of all people? Probably for something nefarious. Well, yeah. they said it. Are you doing anything with that suspicion? I'm keeping my eyes out. Okay. I mean, you do have some moves available. You you can uh this this could be a situation to try and figure someone out. Hmm. Yeah, which is sort of well, As I said, he's sort of going in there to... I think is a different player. That that would be more my specialty. Mm-hmm. Okay. Are you doing that? It, no, it, no, it, no, actually, no. this might actually be more of a read a tense situation now that I'm thinking about it, because you're not actually talking with anyone. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah he yeah. basically Stralden would be coming in there, greeting him with like a firm handshake and talking with him. Like he that's what he would be doing. Okay. Uh, we'll, we will keep that in mind. Uh, does anyone else want to either prevent their teammate from doing that or just go in with them? Does anyone want to stay outside? Uh, it's not my specialty, but I would like to attempt roguish feats to find an alternate way in. Like, say, climbing. <laughs> okay. Just, just, just some way to slip past security unnoticed. Okay. Go for it. Roll, roll, me, roll us some finesse. So that's a... 2d6 and the modifier, right? Right. 2d6 yeah. plus the modifier. All Which... checks in this system are 2d6 plus the appropriate modifier, and that's almost always going to be the stats. So that's a 7. That's a 7. Okay, that's a mixed success. Um, in this particular case, uh, you, you get to pick two. You don't have a clear path of escape. You use up some resources in the attempt, mark decay, or you leave evidence of your roguery behind. I prefer not leaving behind evidence. Okay. So, so, I, so you make it in, but you do not have a way to get out. Probably like dropped in from the roof or something like that, and I can't really climb back up. Okay. Yeah, and you, and you drop in behind the manager, who turns around and looks at you with uh, suspicion. 
And it looks like he was about to strike until he recognized you. Mm-hmm. And probably when you fell, you damaged some of your equipment. Yes, yeah, so we will have to mark a decay for you. Um, I want to do... There's a, there's a particular role where that everyone uh, who enters the building is going to have to do, but we'll need to wait a bit on that. Uh, uh, well, I'm also going to do the Rita 10 situation. Okay, go for, go for it. it. Ooh. That's a fail. We get to make a hard move. Hmm. Um. Hmm. Cat, what do you think about the town sheriff seeing some suspicious activity near the bank? Oh, I think yeah. the town sheriff would would have already been alerted by Barrington just in case and be have her eyes on this. Here's what I'm going to say you notice, uh, if, if I may be so bold when you cat. Go for it. Uh, you catch the glint of steel out of the corner of your eye, and you can see perched up on one of the nearby rooftops is a bunny with a bow drawn back, very much ready to fire. You recognize the uh, battle-weary uh, sheriff of the town. Jacqueline. And if there's a bad ass in the town, that's it. That's her. She is um, not Marcus. It. She is not eerie. Not as in she doesn't belong to those, but as in she is somewhat opposed to both of those. She is very much on the denizen side. Mm-hmm. She doesn't count them as a side. Um, she is enough of a force that she is part of the reason why both of the Marcus and the eerie count the denizens as a side. Yep. Oh, so hopefully I'm in good with her. I was about to say. <laughs> well, in that case, seeing that, I wave and then briskly walk into the bank. All righty. Yeah, she hasn't arrested you yet so far today. Uh, Gustav, are you entering the bank or are you going to do something else? Entering the bank because I figure if anything can look like trying to apply for a loan for the mill. After hours, walking, walking in, walking in with like a briefcase or something. I don't know. <laughs> All right, everyone, roll two d six for us, please. Just straight up two d six. Straight up two d six, because nobody ha- currently has a plus one or minus one to their f- total reputation. Hmm. <laughs> um, the and all those I averages. Guess. Okay. <laughs> Wait. The start from one of mine didn't actually put me to a positive or negative with people. With these no, people. not yet. Um, okay, you need to get five to get positive. You have to get five three, positive get or three negative to actually get oh, them. On. Okay, yeah, it's uh, uh, echelons. I forgot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it, it, it's kind of a, a kind of experience where if you get so much, you level up. But if you only have like one or two experience, you don't actually have a level yet. Yeah, yeah. you're filling the grid to yes. get a, a hole. Yeah. Okay. S- Spud is probably the closest with the denizens, um, with four, thanks to uh, the the partner. With uh, Strat needs to roll still. Uh, what I need to, uh, would be to figure Two someone out, I guess. Since he basically came in and was talking to the person, that would be, I guess, to figure someone out? No, just, just straight no, up 2d6. Just, yeah, straight oh, okay. 2d6. This is something this else, is, yeah. This, this um, is your how, reputation roll. Okay, um, how do I roll with uh, the... The rolls again. It's been a while. Counter sign two d six. You can also just do the minus sign, yeah. either or dash or pound sign two d six. There we go. Yep. Okay. Wow. Two sevens. Two eights. Just straight up averages all over the place. <laughs> yeah. So, so the good news is Barrington hasn't heard anything bad about you. That's good. Uh, that's the surprising. bad news is he hasn't heard anything good about you. <laughs> It would be rare if he did, probably, because it would have to come yeah. from the, uh... Uh, the party may not be too happy with him. All right. Yeah, <laughs> you're, you're the four that he hasn't heard anything that bad about yet. So yeah, you're the four that he's hiring. For me. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. Uh, I, I would say, is this, is this the part where I sort of... This is the part where Barrington introduces himself and gets to the briefing. Go for it. Alrighty. <clears throat> Gentlemen, if you would be so kind to sit, as to sit down in the chairs I have provided for you. And he gestures to a set of four very uncomfortable looking chairs hanging below 
uh, a a sort of dimly lit area of the bank lobby. He takes a moment to sit, though, is mindful of the feathered tail, given the uh, the bit of a long one he has, unfortunately. Yes. Worth noting, I'm going to say this because you mentioned it earlier, Barrington did not shake. It wasn't like a look of disgust or anything. He just sort of looked at it and, and gave a gesture of, no, no, I don't want to, I don't want to uh, uh, do that. Most cures around here, um, woodland creatures being woodland creatures, have openings for tails. Yes. They're still well, very said, uncomfortable t- chairs. Yeah, as I said, this is a big peacock. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yep. Well, I'll take a seat in the chair that's a bit large for me because I'm basically mouse folk sized. Yes, you're definitely one of the smaller, smaller so, vagabonds. Rather than sit on the chair, I'm going to go behind the chair and lean against the back. Okay, would this be where to do the figure someone out kind of thing as they do their thing? Yeah, you can you can go ahead and do the figure someone out here. Okay. Gustav's going to basically be perching on the chair like L, just because it sort of fits the character. Okay. Uh, all right, you can hold one here. So yep. uh, I, I will just... try to think if he what he's. Um, I will try to say figure figure what he what he what he's offering when he goes through this. How much of that's the truth? Okay, uh, I will. I will say say as much after I finish his little spiel. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> Barrington crosses his arm, sort of behind his back, stands as prim, proper, and tall as he can. Which is, uh, it's not very tall, but he still strikes quite the imposing figure with as wide as he is. Um, and uh, uh, Barrington sort of. Cr- makes a path sort of forwards and backwards in front of you and says, Gentlemen, I have brought you here today because there is a matter most pressing for me and my constituents. Um, <clears throat> as you are, well, most likely aware, this is a particularly quarrelsome area between the Marquisat and the Eri, and it is... Very bad for business, for me, personally. So, fortunately for all of us, and I suppose for the citizens of this fair clearing, the Marquisat and the Irie are intending to make peace. Temporary as it might be, but peace nonetheless. There are rumors that certain elements of this town are not interested in peace. And they might try to sabotage the talks that are set to take place in the next few days. I would like to hire you lot to discover who these ne'er-do-wells might be and bring them to attention, if not justice. After all, if this town really goes to hell, I won't be able to pay you for your fine service. And he takes a moment, stands very still, and he sort of looks like, uh, he, he gives a gesture of, do you have any questions to waste my time with? And uh, Stralton, you can tell that this he is perhaps cutting a bit closer to the truth than he normally would. It seems that situation freeing him uh but he is very much telling the truth as far as as far as he knows that peace talks are set to happen but there is rumors that someone might be trying to ruin it i realize that no one you know no elements like this would be operating in front of the sheriff but this really seems more like a sheriff's kind of job and you know her forces well That would be correct. However, she is a bit ragged at the moment due to trying to actually maintain the peace talks. She is, after all, one of the arbiters for it to ensure that mediation goes successfully. If something is happening outside of her purview, outside of the meeting area, then she will not have a chance to really take care of it. And due to the situation, 
There are not many citizens in the area who are unaligned with either the Marquisat or with the Airy. So we're basically deputies. Deputies with a bit more, uh, shall we say, tenuous connections to the law. <sighs> After a moment of sort of looking between, like, him and some of the rest of them, he finally is going to ask, um, given how much he's sort of read into the situation after a moment, as I said, given how forthright you are being here, it has to be truly dire to involve us as the uh, last choice, and uh, probably your last choice in the matter. But whom are you at best suspecting towards uh, that might have the most interesting, the most interesting keeping these talks off the table? That is unfortunately not information that I have. There's been a lot of black powder coming through the area. And the current, shall we say, rumors are that that is the key item to disrupt the talks. But at this point, too many sides have access to that explosive, so it cannot be said exactly. There are several citizens who perhaps disagree on the basis of not letting multiple powers control one area. And I am certain that there are members of the side who are just as keen to not kowtow to their, their opponent. It's hmm. better to have it anarchy than a parliament of nobles. I assume some would feel that way, yes. Real diverse bunch in this town. The problem is that with this, you would have the issue of the people suffering more than the any of the more landed individuals in question for this. Hmm. Okay, would the the uh, deputy, the, would the sheriffs in question have perhaps something that they might be willing to divulge in this case? I guess that would be a um, persuaded NPC, wouldn't it? I think so, yeah. I think, I think if you want to get any particular information out of it, because it, it sure does seem like he doesn't want to be like directly oh, associated oh, wait, wait, with you guys. I got the wrong thing. I'm... Oh, no worries. A uh, nine, which Ooh. is... Uh... That it's, it's close. Um, on a seven to nine, they aren't sure. You need to sway them somehow. Yeah. Um... Actually, he's going to actually put forth that basically in his just dealings around town. Like he may have heard nothing bad, but given the typical, given what he's probably had people watch, at least watching over what he was doing to see if he was a tangible candidate, how he's treated the people openly and without any bias, but being protective of them appealing that he has a sense of honor and justice uh and sorry who who is doing that demonstration are you talking about Stralden or Stralden or... is basically basically offering that he's probably had people if he was to giving this kind of talk off the table mm -hmm. that he's probably had people looking at him through his actions and dealings with the the people around town as he's lived as he's come through here and trying, seeing that he trying to trying to argue that you've got a reputation as the honorable vagabond, as an honorable and person that looks out for the little people, yeah, basically the pe a people's champion. And yeah, that's... And you're, you're trying <laughs> and... to talk to a banker from that. Position. As I said, basically someone that is capable of upholding the law, like yeah, basically a banker. Yeah, I know, but I'm I, saying like I... banker. <laughs> well, as I said, I don't, I don't. The other is strong arming. I mean, that's not the uh, that's not the answer. So I'm trying. Yeah, that's not, what are you What are you trying to get? 
Well, as I said, I'm just trying to ask if there's something he can get the sheriff to share, basically. Oh, that's trying, sort of what trying I'm to get him to, to, to lean on the, the sheriff to provide us so, with something that she might know. I feel like we should let the GM talk to. a bit, because on a no. 7th and 9 for persuading an NPC, the GM will tell you what you need to do to sway them. No worries. I, I, I was uh, chatting with Winged to make sure that I'm I'm getting all right. of the proper information out. Okay, sorry. Yeah, right. uh, uh, And the sheriff, the sheriff is actually at the front door, uh, looking about as if to make sure nobody's watching before coming in. Mm-hmm. Um... Uh, I believe Barrington will uh, at that sort of. I think if you, I think if you want to persuade Barrington to uh, get more, you know, basically get as much info out of the sheriff for you as possible, um, you need to do something to prove that, you know, if anything goes bad, none of this will come back to Barrington. Because hmm. I think that's I think that's the big thing here. I don't think that's something we can offer at this stage. Yeah. No, unfortunately, we not may, technically. We may, we may just have to press the the sheriff and deputies ourselves for leads. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. He's he's pretty invested in taking a light touch, other than hiring us. Yeah. Yes. So that we, would be nothing. I could really. He would probably sort of go with the, the shaking of his head, and. Just, just sort of, um, sort of let it drop at that because there's nothing really he could do. Uh, fair enough. Um, uh, Barrington sort of gestures. Are there any other questions, or shall I, uh, set you up for the night? Ooh, we get room and board. I am nothing if not a generous. Generous what? Badger, sorry. <clears throat> Barrington is my name. It is a nickname I have assumed over the course of my life. Roger. Well, no, Barrington. <laughs> yes, I was waiting for someone <laughs> to say that. I couldn't take it. Like, I had to give someone the chance. <sighs> well, yeah, that's... Yeah, I'm just eager to... to get to work i guess uh, i'd rather not you know see a clearing and up uh, see all the denizens get torn apart by uh, another petty squabble between the hiery and the marquise so yes, yeah that i'm in be most beneficial to all of us <laughs> loki don't really care about barrington here but <laughs> it's it's a good cause it's you know there's and there will be probably opportunities to get one over on both factions as far as their representatives are in town. So all the better. Lots of opportunities here for side gigs. Mm hmm. Uh, and I do believe uh, be before you uh, are released, Barrington will uh, very briefly go back to the uh, front desk and pull out a small sack of uh, what you assume to be coins based on the way it's sort of jingling. Uh, and he sets it down on one of the side tables near you, but not directly in your hands and goes, I believe that uh, that, can, can, that can be considered as the, uh, shall we say, payment upfront to ensure a good service. Hmm. He's sort of going to look to the rest of them as sort of a, a bit more shocked that it's that kind of bad. <laughs> that's, you know, covering operating costs and plus room and board. That's a very generous offer. Hmm. So the four of you take the coins? I take the chair. <laughs> <laughs> Oh God! Why? <laughs> you're taking oh. the un you're taking oh. the uncomfortable chair. Yeah, he could probably make I it really nice and padded. <laughs> Are you going to carry this chair with you through the woods? Yeah. <laughs> He's probably going to get stolen to try to carry it. <laughs> I just I. 
This is. I wish I could argue with the logic for this, but I've had character do this before, so. This is a time when furniture is like not. Yeah. Not insignificant. <laughs> before they go, though, is the the deputy seeming to interact with the group at all, or they just, he's or is the deputy more providing Overwatch for the badger? You mean the sheriff? Yes. Uh, the sheriff is looking at you. She is also looking at, um, at scenes outside, and so all four of you have taken the payment, right? Yes. Yeah. We will. right. Um, seconds later, you hear musket fire from outside. <laughs> Naturally. The sheriff throws open the door. Hey, if you're on board, we need you now. Lovely. I grab the chair and run outside. <laughs> Into danger. Um, outside, you see a fox dressed in a smock um, running from a very obviously irate group of market, of cats. Hmm. Who do I throw the chair at? Actually, let's Jordan throw the chair. He's got a pretty good strength at it. Is it a guy fox? <laughs> God. Ow. Oh. <laughs> I've been sitting on that joke for about an hour. You know, in, uh, Bravo. In, in that Bravo. sense, I admire your restraint. Yes. Um. Yes, it does. It, it could be a guy fox, as far as you can tell. Yeah, seeing that they're shooting at someone, like, he's unarmed, doesn't have anything immediate that seems to be wrong with him, like, right? he doesn't seem Correct. to be running with anything. Mm. So, well, he, he, he's got a uh, sculptor's uh, chisel and hammer in, in hand, and what looks like it might be, like, a uh, little thing of glue on the side. A little container of glue. I uh, believe you also hear um, the following. <laughs> Give me just a moment. <laughs> You cannot stop art, cat! Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, yes. <laughs> Sorry, I, I'm leaving most of the character voices to Dan. Wise yeah. choice. Perfectly acceptable. Okay. So, so there's... How far away are these people? Are the... Um, the sheriff, who should I throw this chair at? So <laughs> the, uh, fo the fox is running your way and is going to pass in front of the bank soon. Obviously, the cats are chasing him, and the sheriff is just, stop this! Hmm. Probably, okay. d probably don't well, want to, like, cause bodily harm at this stage. Yeah. But, so, which is why I'm going to throw the chair. <laughs> Fair Less enough. Less harm than a crossbow. Strictly correct. Well, Stockton is... Are they just trying to... When you say musket, you're talking about the two-handed ones, right? Yeah. Okay, rather do we, than... Okay, so do we, do we try to stop the, the fox thief, or do we... Yeah, Stone's going to basically sort of march forward, and as the fox comes forward, he's reaching and he's grabbing him. Okay. Hmm. I, think like, we just need some kind, I think we need some kind of role here. Grapple yeah. an enemy. Yeah. So that would be a just straight might roll? Um, yeah. So technically, it, it's a move. Um, Roll with might. Yeah. Okay. Help or interfere. Or no. Yeah, does anyone want to uh, it, take a little exhaustion to boost the roll? Hmm. Um, let's see. Ah, yes, this would be grapple with enemy and with might, yeah. Okay. Te technically, grapple's a weapon move that I don't think the Arbiter has, but I mean, it's the perfect choice here. I'm willing to go for it. Yeah, okay. well, it's not on grapple, so... Yeah. Well, like, I think... Oh, oh dang no. it. I'm so used to... Ah. Oh, no, wait. Sorry. Yeah, grapple's one anyone can use. I'm sorry. My yeah, brain en just... Engage, threw. grapple, and target is you know, kind of the, your basics. Yeah, basic uh, I am not rolling well. So, you rolled a seven. Okay. Yeah. Um... That's still a hit. Uh, so with a grapple on a seven to nine, choose simultaneously. Continue making choices until someone disengages or dies. 
Um, so you, you have uh, basically, you pick one of the following. Um, you strike a fast blow, inflict injury. You wear them down, they mark exhaustion. You exploit weakness, mark exhaustion to inflict two injury. You withdraw, disengage to close range. I'm going to basically close to make sure he can't try to run. Like, basically, I'm going to sort of use the grapple to sort of pull him closer to me. Okay. Uh, that's, that's not one of your choices, though. I mean, you're already at intimate range with the grapple. Yeah. Yeah, so... Oh, okay. I, I see. I thought it was, like, basically, if he tries to... Because he's going to try to, I think, run again, or... It's it's one of your four choices under grapple an enemy under weapon moves. Yes. Yeah, and, that's what and... I was looking at. Like, you withdraw... Oh, withdraw... Dis- okay, disengage... Oh, yeah, I see. You withdraw, I've disengage to close range. Oh, I... I yeah. So I'm going okay, to wear them down. <laughs> we, I'm gonna go with we wear them pick, down. I think uh, through not intentionally, but I think this particular fox is a uh, uh, real wriggly. <laughs> I think you're also going to mark exhaustion in the process. Okay. Um. And uh, man. so while they're doing that, can I sneak up behind and hit him with a chair? <laughs> <laughs> How can I say no to that? Wing, winged cat, can we say no to that? Um, it's not so much sneak up as run up, but yes, yeah. you, you have enough time to sneak to move up and strike with a chair. All right, go for it. So let's see, what role would that be? Um, uh, two d six plus might. I don't know what move it is, but I know it's two d six plus might. I mean, it's probably, clearly it would, an improv- it's, it's an improvised weapon. <laughs> yeah, clearly. But I don't have that, so I'm engage yeah, sword to sword. Because <laughs> improvised okay, weapon it, it, is specifically making. Yeah, it yeah it 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 functions the same way as engaged sword, so it's fine. Yep. Chair does not have range, so. All right. You engage an enemy chair to sword at close range. <laughs> yep. All right. Go ahead and make that roll. That's a five. Ooh. We get to make a hard move here. Uh, well, you smash a chair on the ground. Yeah, I like I said. I I feel like this fox is real wriggly. Do you think Wing Cat? Do you think maybe Stralden might have got a hit a bit there? Uh, yeah, I think that's a distinct <laughs> possibility when you're striking into melee. And we are yeah. now officially having a bar fight. Okay. <laughs> Yes. Also the, cha- fight. also, the chair is a little wrecked. It's not going to survive more than one more use. Yeah, okay. I think mark one injury, Stralton. Uh, I have armor on, which actually prevents that. Oh. Fair enough. Yep. The, the chair had a single decay track, and it is now marked, so one more use of the chair, and it's going to break. Mm-hmm. Yeah, because I have a, pl- a, let's see, a plate armor. The Which, first injury we suffer oh. from arrows in a scene. Oh, arrows! Yeah, okay. I mean, but, but it's a chair, no, but, but an arrow. Th- th- I, 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 I think a plate mail would uh, protect our, against a chair. Our, the the uh, the real fast. That's just the particular tag that it has. It, it is also good against arrows. Um, but no armor in general. Like it, this is in the the specific rule book, the quick start guide. Armor, if it makes sense, would defend you. Still defends you. Okay. So, yes. Right. Yeah. It still so takes the one decay. decay. Instead of yep, okay. Injured. But, yes. You're, you're not injured, but, uh, yeah, your armor got a little scuff. Hmm. And it makes um, a lovely gonging sound. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. All right, that leaves two other reactions, as a, if I have my count right. Yep. Uh, pocket sand, I guess. <laughs> Going to blind the fox. Yeah, that'll that'll slow him down. Sure will. Well, you think it will? Roll some cunning. That's actually. Oh yeah, it's cunning for my pocket sand, right? Yeah. Which is plus two. I was looking at special blind, but pocket sand Mm. allows me to do it with cunning instead of finesse. Right. Good. Because otherwise, that's a difference between plus two instead of minus one. Yep. Which is why you took it, yeah. Ten. Ooh! Oh boy. On a ten. Okay. Yeah, on a on a ten plus, they have to take some time to clean out their eyes. I think that successfully stops this fox completely as it just sort of goes, Oh, my beautiful eyes! 
How will Angelo do his art now? Um, that still leaves the um, angry Marcus uh, soldiers coming in. They fired their muskets, so they're not a, a problem. But um, each one of them's got swords. And there's mm -hmm. one more PC reaction to um, stop that. Sorry if I spiked the volume, by the way. No, you're actually Ooh. fine. <laughs> you, you, hard you, were, you, were win you were within range. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> oh, boy. <sighs> Thing, thing is, do we want us? Do we need to stop the Marcus at soldiers once we've got the? You want to stop the Marcus at soldiers from coming in, swords drawn, and impaling this guy and everyone around him. By the way, you're around him. Oh yeah. Uh... The the sheriff is holding back so, uh, arrow drawn, but uh, she might not be able to stop you until after they started actually injuring the citizens. Mm -hmm. What do you got? Uh, dread that could maybe halt a group in their tracks. Jury so rig. Did you pick Harry or Perry for your weapon skill? Perry. Perry. Okay. I could have done Harry with the longbow, maybe, but I didn't want to like. I mean, it, as far as like moves go, this could be. Persuade or trick an NPC. Uh, you could also just trust fate. Well, you could you could you could say that basically yeah. the we're taking this person to the the sheriff, and they're right. You can point to where the sheriff is. Yeah. Do you really Reed wish to break the peace, like Reed that kind of thing? Yeah. Read a tense situation also could help here. I'm leaning towards the read a tense trick or. Jury rig, because those are all cunning, which I'm good at. Okay. Yeah, read a 10 situation might be the trick here to figure out a way to get them to stop. It's very tense regardless. Yeah, I'm... Huh. Kind of leaning towards trick, just looking at it. Okay. Ding! Oh, okay. How are you tricking them? That's an eleven, so it's a it's a straight success. How are you getting them to do what you want, and what do you want them to do? Deploy tripwire. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. It's just halt them because you know there's the sheriff right there and well, specifically you're tricking them, them not 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 persuading them yeah but the question is ugh. if you could if you had like there's, this is a relatively nice place like with set stones and stuff like that right yeah More or less relative. like this yeah it's, it's, a, it's an outdoor it's an outdoor path but yeah um there is room to set up a tripwire as I said, like you could do like a basically having like sort of thrown a uh, like a, a like two jury, stones or whatever. Well, with, jury uh, rig is that sort of thing. Yeah, like done like a like a basically two stones and you sort of whip them out past them that they'll hit when they come and just sort of dog oh, pile a, on each other. Bolus. Or if you're tricking them, you could just say that you did that. Or be like, look, another one behind you. <laughs> Well, because with the jury rig, 10 plus, it works exceptionally well, so. Yeah. I'm going to say that takes all of them down. So, so you're, you're, yeah. you decided that your option here was to build a tripwire that takes down a bunch of Marcus Hot Soldiers. Well, or at this th point, throw, throw bolus, I think, is probably the, fa the faster option here. Yeah, just grab two stones nearby, some wire, and just whip it. Or say that you had one handy. Yeah. Is that what you want to do, Dread? Yep. Okay, yeah, that does uh, trip them up. These are just mooks, so... Yeah. Yeah, they, yeah you, take, you take them out. <laughs> um... I think there's you, you probably, with, you know, with an 11, you did ex exceptionally well and managed to t to knock out this squad of soldiers. Um, 
<laughs> and Jacqueline mention, uh, motions you around the side of the bank so that you guys are out of sight by the time they get their woods back together. Yeah. Hmm. That said, I think we need to mark <laughs> Marcus Sot as uh, maybe not so keen on that. I think you're going to take a little bit of notoriety for that. Yeah. All of us, or... I mean, we did help them, ca- you know, help the capture happen. Yeah, you did help the capture, and then stop them from actually succeeding. Well, we just, I, we, we just didn't want them to... Uh, fair enough. Uh, you, they don't know that. <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't tell them, hey, we, we got it under control. I think specifically, Gustav, maybe the rest of you, I think that's something we'll figure out later. Mm-hmm. De- but definitely yeah, Gustav. take the, the fox sort of by the between the scruff of the neck and with uh, one of the the tail as well. So just sort of picking him up and making sure he didn't he doesn't want to run as as he sort of hits on back that way. Yeah, yeah we'll, we'll just we'll just stick around for the capture and be like, hey, here we go. Okay, so you captured the fox. You're are you uh, taking the fox around the side then, or yeah, because. We'll, make, we'll take him in the custody of the, the sheriff. Uh, mm-hmm. Right. So, sheriff um, waits... And if, and if, the, if the Mark is it wants to you know talk about jurisdiction, then they can have that conversation with the sheriff's office. Fair yeah. enough. Okay, so so you get, you get to the side, and the sheriff asks, Okay, Angelo, what'd you do this time? Um, <laughs> Angelo the fox takes a few moments to continue rubbing out the sand that is just really irritating his eyes uh, before he go, uh, before he goes, I just was working on my latest piece of art. I don't know why they hate oh. it so much. I just depicted the Marquisat as it should be seen. A cogwork monster ready to kill us all. Graffiti artist. <laughs> I, oh, and, but like, but like did, Renaissance era. Did you say era. that out loud? Did you say that out loud? Yes. The gra- graffiti art. <laughs> uh, you hear uh, Angelo spits <laughs> and says, Angelo does not work in the realm of paints. Angelo is an artist who sculpts the finest creations. Oh, It was dear. a statue. Thank you very much. Ah. Uh. <laughs> Uh, I don't have a rebuttal for that. <laughs> not, off the, not off the top of my head. <laughs> this year, face palms and is just so cogwork statue. What did yes. you do? I merely presented it to the Marquisat as a gesture of my appreciation for their inspiration, and, and then I would... set it on fire. Ooh, nice. <sighs> it's stone. It will survive. Did you stop to consider? This is the from the person when he, when he says the word consider. He takes a moment to sort of shake the the fox very very brusquely by the point of how many other conditions that it might spread to other places and other people. I am absolutely. Just a guess that you would suggest that Angelo does not understand property. That's not a yes. That's <laughs> not a... It so... was close to the river. I'm sure it's all fine. Would you be willing to be handed back to the Marquis with your uh, lack of attention to detail? <laughs> Angelo sighs. Uh, oh. very well. What can Angelo do to cons- to persuade you to let him go? <laughs> He's saying this in front of the the sheriff. Yes, I love this. <laughs> well, obviously the sheriff already knows him. <laughs> the sheriff, yeah, the sheriff does know Angelo, and uh, uh, and by her pained expressions, knows his uh, reputation. Mm-hmm. Well, I guess if you and the uh, the rogue art scene, if you've wondering if you've heard it about anyone who might be trying to sabotage the would-be peace talks in either group's favor. 
uh, Angelo um, kind of goes a bit mum at that uh, and then turns because uh, you're still holding him by his tail, which I imagine scruff, the hurts. scruff and the tail, basically. I've got, I've got him by the scruff, okay. so basically he can't really, he can wiggle, but he's going to hurt himself. Yeah. And the tail, I, in case so he's trying to, so he stays still. Yes. Uh, he, I think if Angelo he tries to turn, running. he'd turn him to where he was trying to turn to. Okay. I think Angelo is turning to try and face you, actually, <laughs> um, and go, Would you be so kind as to let Angelo down? I promise not to run. The last time I did in front of our lovely Sheriff Jacqueline, she shot me in the heel, and it hurt. <laughs> Seeing as the good ship here has a pup, a most impeccable aim, I would be assured of. He takes a moment and just lets go. Uh, just lets go. Yeah, just drops him like basically. Angelo hits second. dirt, <laughs> and you hear a very soft, "Oh, Angelo's eco!" Before it he stands be up, <laughs> he stands up, brushes himself off, and goes, "Yes, well, I, I." would love to uh, let you know all of the things that Angelo knows, which is a many thing. Um, but I'm not sure my uh, bosses at the Riverfolk Company would like me to just sort of uh, let out the various shipping manifests. So Make that's our lead. <laughs> Sorry, what? I want a sculpture that I can blow up. <laughs> Full of gunpowder. Yeah, you do you tell that to Angelo? I do. He grabs your hands and looks like he's about to kiss you. <laughs> it will be my finest work. Excellent. Okay, before we engage in terrorism, maybe we can stop some first. <laughs> he's. Going to I can't believe I'm saying this. No, no, as I said, he's sort of letting this sort of go on, the sort of listening. Stralden, do you want to say something? <laughs> At the moment, he's sort of double-checking on a strap that had gotten loose for things with the uh, scuffle that the fox had sort of grabbed and yanked. But he sort of looks to the pair of them. After, we can have, we, you, you can do your celebratory uh, fireworks uh, later, okay? All right. I'm going fi- to try and figure out this fox here. Okay. But, um, actually, I'm trying to think. Was there something I can... That'll be a nine on charm. A nine, okay. On a figure, someone out. It's the you you hold um, one. Yeah, hold one. What would you like to figure out? Hmm. I, actually, hmm. how could I how could I get uh, him to tell me more of what he knows about his bosses and what he actually, just what he, that... what he just said about. <laughs> Uh, his bosses and shipping manifests, and in response to the question I asked, actually, I, I can do that. <clears throat> I can do a, um, I can use the the might right there because I have the option of with Arbiter to uh, carry the the big, not really the big smick, but where was the carry the, where was the um, he's going to sort of go down to. Actually, would I be able to use sort of gu- guardian here in a sense of the the fact of like if I were to sort of sit down, sort of to look him more like in the eye, given this like size difference between things that like if I were to ex- sort of ex- explain that we didn't hear it from him in the sense of matters, but just that a the nature of passing word of mouth for whatever, if he was wish- willing to be more forthright in a private environment. Um, like the sort of the guardian sense, like basically sort of taking the, the viewpoint to, or I guess that would be, I guess that I, would be. Uh, I, I don't think you can. I think the guardian ability kind of needs a more of an active threat. Okay. Yeah, more of an active threat than the passive. Like, I don't think you know more more no, than like if my boss is found out, I'd be ruined. Okay. Um. Okay. Well, so how about well, I could actually sort of use the I could use might there instead and say like, if things go bad, there won't be a place for you to do art. As he sort of he he could get to see the sword that he didn't use. Plus, he's got this big bird leering over him in heavy armor. Sort of that way. What I could do that with a mite, or you can talk to my friend here, 
any uh, sort of gesture Strat, like that. Way. I haven't had my question answered yet. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Also, what you're asking is persuade with promises or threats. So uh, that's more of a charm roll. Anyway. Okay, gotcha. Sorry. You, you, your specific question was how could I? How could you get him? How could you get Angelo to tell you more about uh, the, his bosses and that information? Correct. Yes. Okay. You can tell based on uh, what he's said, how he has acted, that uh, Angelo is very much art above anything else. And so if you can uh, encourage slash assist with his next project, whatever that might be, uh, whether it's like funding it or getting him the materials required or something along those lines, if you can convince him that this can be art, then I think you can get that info from him. I say, hey, Angelo, look, you may not realize it, but there's a there's a fantastic epic tale brewing here about, you know, this drama of someone trying to sabotage the peace talks and at the expense of the denizens who just want to do live their lives and work commerce. And if you can help us secure peace, you can memorialize that in sculpture. You see gears turning in Angelo's head. And his voice kind of goes, and, and he, his posture changes from this sort of mellow, dramatic, uh, you know, flailing that he has been doing to a much more subdued sort of, uh, like, you can see him sort of, like, folding in on himself just with his body language. And he leans in and goes, so what you are promising, Angelo, is that you will uh, create something that allows him perfect opportunity to satirize, ridicule, and mock those who might belittle others? Oh. Angelo is quite intrigued by this. And if it's something that memorializes the peace agreement that protects this clearing, they might even let you display that in the center of town if it's not too obscene. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh, Angelo has not had a public display that was not immediately burned down. Hmm. Very well, I suppose uh, the best information I can give you is that uh, my superiors, the, the people who fund my art... Uh, your, your patron. My, my patron, yes. Uh, they are from the Riverfolk Company, as I let slip a few moments ago, and they are, let me, they are currently squirreled away, <laughs> forgive the pun, uh, uh, currently. It's, it's what quest. we do. It's what we do. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> they are currently sequestered away uh, to the north. Um, y y you are aware of the other clearing, of course. They are... Uh, uh, the Riverfield Company keeps their paperwork up in cool water. And they have, at least from the books I've seen, they have a bit of information about the black powder that isn't coming in. I've seen a bit more coming in than the war effort has required. Couldn't tell you to whom, but it's there. So that's our lead. All right, that'll do it. I don't suppose you've noticed anything nefarious from your bosses and in that sort of direction, or is that all you know? <laughs> Angelo, Angelo scoffs. <laughs> you think I care about what those fools with the money do? No, I am just interested in creating something. Well, yeah. if you ever need something blown up or burned down, let me know. Why, why do I know you? <laughs> <laughs> Um, Why indeed? I think Jacqueline the sheriff coughs and goes, <clears throat> uh, Angelo, I'm afraid if you're uh, planning anything, you might need to run it by me first. And or Angelo maybe looks, not. <laughs> Angelo looks a bit sort of sheepish at that and goes, but of course, sheriff, I would never deign to intrude upon your law and rules and order and other such dreck. <clears throat> and Jacqueline rolls her eyes. <laughs> and I think Jacqueline is also at this point going to go, 
All right. Uh, so as far as you four are concerned, uh, I believe that your, uh, I believe that your current, the, the place where you may find lodgings for the night is uh, the hunt. And she points to a tavern slash inn uh, over it's, it's across town. It's a ways for it's, opposite direction of uh where the cats are where the the marquisat soldiers are currently trying to figure out what the hell just happened um and you are sort of free to go however she does grab angelo by the back and says and i think you and me are going to have a big a bit of a talk but first we got to get out of here all right so mm -hmm. Yes. I guess we'll rest up and then travel up to uh, what's it called? Yeah, take a roundabout way there rather than walking right back out to the open. Yeah. <laughs> now nah, I'm gonna go grab some pieces of that chair and then go there. <laughs> that chair is going to become your companion cube. I'm planning on lighting it at fire at some point. You know what? That's perfectly fair. I should have expected that. All right. With it being eight, do we want to continue, or do we feel like wrapping that's, up? For the that's night? that's been a three-hour session. I think that's yeah. Just, uh, this is a good yeah. time. To... Okay, so um, everyone get plus one uh, reputation, plus one reputation experience equivalent uh, for the denizens. Hey, because you helped up the sheriff. Puts me yep. up to plus five. Does anyone get to plus five on that? Uh, Spud, but I don't think anyone else is quite there with the Dennis. Yeah, I, don't, I need to actually get a fully finalized character sheet because you mentioned you were working on those. Yes, uh, the only thing I, I'm having a bit of patience down, I will send that to you guys. No well, problem. We, we, we can go over to mechanics since someone did get to a full plus five. So since you got to plus five, you clear out all the po positive and negative reputation experience on the line, and then put a circle around the plus one. So that you you know that you now have a plus one reputation with the denizens. To get to plus two, since you cleared them all out, you have to get those same five and then the remaining five up to the plus two mark. Gotcha. However, so if you, if you scan three infamy, which is not just negative experience but actually counted as infamy, then that would take you back down to the zero mark. Even if you were at nine positive, going down a mark clears it all out. Yep. So it, it you're you're really only ever gonna it's you can get to the plus two plus three or minus two minus three but it's gonna take some real effort. Gotcha. And it's gonna, it's it's gonna bounce between one minus deal. one and plus one. Yeah. So does reaching the uh, next level of prestige clear out notoriety too? Yeah, it clears up the entire row. Yeah. Okay. So okay, it, this just says clear all prestige boxes on the track. Yep. Yeah, that, that's why there are positive and negative boxes, and they are separate. Okay. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. So you're pretty much like going to ever really have outside some lucky f situations, just the plus one. Okay. Since the end of session, did anyone uh, fulfill any of their drives? Uh, I did protect. Even though I did grab him for things, I did protect uh, Angelo from the guards. Okay. Then uh, do an advance. I think you can. Possible. Possible greed for securing the payday, but eh. No, uh, I, I, I didn't know that that was a money. serious payday. I got I got caught when I tried to sneak in, and I haven't overthrown anyone tyrannical or dangerously overbearing. So yeah, because I didn't try to harm him. I just tried to sort of subdue him gently from basically the guards, which would be in the defender, and he would the guards would have killed him. Yeah, as I said, if it would have come down to it. I would have tried to. I don't think I would have been able to use the guardian, but I would have tried to. Yeah. If they would have come to him, even though if that meant getting cut up. Yeah, that feels. I don't, that that feels. I don't think I've escaped certain death or incarceration. How uh, does the advancement work for? I want to so, since we reached that okay, point. So, so when you when you do an advancement, and you can advance from each of your drives once per session. Uh, you can call it out in the middle of the session when it happens, or at the end of the session, like now. We go over it and review, did anyone get them? When you advance, you choose one from take plus one to a stat, maximum plus two. Take a new move from your playbook. You can have maximum five from your playbook. Take a move from any other playbook, max two moves from any other playbook. Take up to two new weapon skills, max eight total. Add one box to any of your three harm tracks. Or take up to two new connections, max six total. Hmm. 
Oh, I'd have to think about that because at one point, like if I'm going to be like potentially fighting and all, that would be exhaustion might be one to up for me as an option, or taking the weapon skills because that might be something that happens too. My, like the the things in black are uh, my weapon skills that are base, right? The ones that are not would well, be like the things. The things in black, you choose one of them to be your base. Yeah, I, I could add two more to that if I chose like right. The the, the advancement weapon skills, or you choose two from the list. It doesn't have to be bolded. Okay, thank you. Any two that you don't already have. Yeah. So, you you could yeah, so choose, you, get, you could pick improvise or Harry or vicious strike or disarm or any of them. Right. Yeah. The bold the bold is only this is you choose one of these four to start with. Yeah. Um, and then you have like eight or ten uh, listed total on your sheet, and that's okay. the one, that's the list you can choose from when you level up or when you advance. Okay. And some of those seem but, pretty powerful. But, right. But note, you can only choose one of those six options. So taking yeah. two new weapon skills, you do that instead of any of the others. Or yeah, adding that's... one box to any one harm track, you do that instead of the others. Okay. Yeah. Actually, I'm tempted to probably do either do the the one of the new moves, because I have an option that lets me heal wounds automatically. As a, And I figure if I'm going to be pit at something, I'm probably being able to do... I don't know. I'll have to think about that and definitely let you know about what yeah, fits, because cool. like, it's one of those well, weird thoughts. Well, we're in a session, so just make sure to mention it at the start of the next session. Yeah. Or, or you, you know, yeah. If you send it to me when you figure it out, I'll yep. Update the sheet, and um, then we can pull it out for the record on the session next time. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Okay. And I'll see if I can't find a way to get everyone's reputation stuff down. Yep. All right. Well, that was very fun. Yeah. Very different. Oh yeah. I'm excited. I'm looking forward to the second session. Me too. Okay. All right. Thank you very much. I'm glad to be part of this. And to everyone watching and listening, thank you for listening to our Spud Ventures. If you like what you heard, you can find more at youtube.com slash to be Spud or spudventures.libsyn.com or Google Play Podcasts or uh, iTunes Podcasts, wherever you get your fine podcasts. Uh, we, when we live stream these games, we try to do it Sundays at 2 p.m. Pacific at twitch.tv slash newbiespud. If you want to keep up with this and other projects I'm doing, you can follow me at Twitter at newbiespud. And if you want to support my ability to produce more content like this, please support me at patreon.com slash newbiespud. Uh, see you next time with uh, Forgotten Ones. I believe I think so. so. That said, one last thing we probably need to say uh, for those of you listening within uh, you know a few uh, a few days. Um, it is currently October sixth, twenty nineteen. The Root Tabletop Kickstarter is still going on. It has thirteen oh, yes. days we should, to go. We should, we should absolutely plug that. Um, Give yeah, me a link like, I can plug here. Yes, I will send you to. I will send you. To I Kickstarter. have one. Boop. Um. Yes, if you feel like, if you liked what you heard, uh, they're adding a hell of a lot, um, uh, including up to, I believe it's another 12 playbooks. Uh, all of the um, all of the different factions are more fully written, and uh, they're also giving a lot more weapons, uh, denizens, and uh, clearings, like pre-built stuff. So. Yeah, it's already cleared most of the stretch goals they had already thought of. Yeah. Um, if, if you're only listening to this, head over to Kickstarter and look for a kick, for Root Role Playing Game. You'll find it. Root yep. colon the tabletop role playing game. By Magpie Games. All right. I think that's everything then. All right. Well, thank you for listening, and we will see you next time. Bye bye.